This is Dick Stadium along the home of Kent State Golden Flashes football here in Kent, Ohio. Welcome to another Saturday of ESPN College football. Today, Mike London uh, brings his bison of Howard in to see the Kent State Golden Flashes. With that, we say great to see all of you. Delighted you're here. I'm Michael Regai, joined by my partner, Gerard Cherry. Mike London, the first-year head coach of Howard, sent college football on its ear last week. Shockwaves as they went out to UNLV, Gerard, a huge underdog, and registered a 43-40 win, and their true freshman quarterback, Kalen Newton, was terrific. Yeah, and he certainly put the college landscape on notice that he is one to be reckoned with. You know the name, Newton. You said yourself, Cam's younger brother. But Kalen let everyone know that he is a for real football player and very excited to see his dynamic ability on full display today, Michael. Yeah, he was named the uh, MEAC Rookie of the Week last week for his performance and had a stellar high school career in the city of Atlanta. Now turn it over and take a look at Kent State. Well, their fifth-year senior quarterback, and Nick Holly, had to deal with Clemson last week. And for Kent State, it was a rough day offensively. But multi-dimensional dual threat Holly, fifth-year senior, looking to generate a lot of offense today for Kent State. Yeah, and Holly is a quintessential blue-collar football player in that you ask him to do something, he can do it. Converted running back, asked to play quarterback, has filled in nicely. Yes, the numbers were not prolific last week, but what you appreciate about Nick is his effort and his will to get the job done. All right, so one of those FCS, FBS battles as uh, Howard comes in here looking to go to 2-0 and on a year. Kent State looking to grab their first win. We'll get this thing kicked off and rolling for you with all the atmosphere of college football coming your way next on ESPN. Oh, no, 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 that, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> it's not true, Will. No, no, no. What about, what about, I can't tell. Look at the 43-yard line. Visor 43-yard line. Visor 43-yard line. Don't try it until we confirm it for it. 88 and 1. Guy Lamagne. Justin Dooley. Guy Lamont. No, that's 13. That's now. not him either. Nope. Guy Lamagne and nope. Jordan Scott. So where is he? Uh, he might be in the booth because he's a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Don't see him. Kickoffs for Kent State. I'm thinking that's Shane Hines. Game two of this 2017 college football season for both these squads ready to go. Great to have you with us. Just absolutely beautiful sun-kissed September afternoon here around Northeast Ohio as you take a look at uh, Guy Lamagne back in the deep spot for the Howard Bison. And again, Howard, hey, if you didn't catch it all week long, gave off a stunning 43-40 to 40 win over FBS. UNLV's running Rebels. Shane Hines on the approach and game on here at Dick Stadium. Lamagne from a yard deep for Howard. Got a flag that's going to denote a block in the back as Lamagne crossed the 20 yard line. Howard's going to be set back from there as uh, on the opening kickoff, our first, first penalty flag flies. 
And on that stop on Kent State on that kickoff return was uh, Manny Lawrence Burke. So inside that huddle, Gerard Jerry, we're going to take a look at this dazzling young sophomore. Holding on the receiving team, number 47. Half a distance to the goal, first down. With a very familiar football name, of course. 5'11", 195 pound true freshman, Kalen Newton. Yep, the younger brother of Cam Newton. And what you like about Kalen is that he's already making a name for himself. Because one of the things you assume is, okay, Cam's younger brother, probably getting off the name recognition from that. But again, when you beat an FBS team and you're coming from the FCS, that's going to put people on notice that you are for real. Got a terrific running back uh, with them. They start out of the pistol with an offset and do a lot of zone read principles. And that first carry of the afternoon is from Desmond Wortham. Wortham got shut down. This Kent State uh, front seven pretty good as you take a look at Wortham off uh, that short game. So just underway here in Dick Stadium. And Gerard will, will note that, again, that uh, Howard uh, goes quickly with a little bit of tempo. Newton will keep the football. Not a lot of room. He got tracked down from behind as Kent State closing that down defensively. And if you want to corral Newton, that is exactly how you're going to have to play defense from a swarming aspect. And if you see right here, you have to gang tackle Newton. He will beat you one-on-one. -on -one. But if you have a plethora of players coming to the football, that's going to help your cause. Last week, Caitlin Newton threw for 140 yards. Hit 15 to 26. Had a special afternoon. Ran for 190 more. Newton feeling heat. That throw is incomplete. Pressure was coming. Theo Eboisbe with some heat on. And Eboisbe uh, had some help as well, Gerard, as uh, Matt Barr, that outside linebacker, put heat on Newton on the three and out. And that's exactly what you want, a three and out situation. And those signs so far from the Kent State defense that they are remembering anything that took place last week in Clemson, at Clemson. Zaquan Tyson will be deep as uh, you take a look at uh, Damon Gillespie. There's Gillespie wearing number 80. For this uh, Howard Bison squad. They're from uh, the MEAC in the FCS, Mid-Eastern Atlantic Conference. Out of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Mm, Gillespie didn't hit a real good one. Got a fortuitous bounce as Kent State grabbed the football as uh, one of those up men for Kent State uh, coming up with. That was uh, Miles Daniel, the, uh, the redshirt freshman. So Daniel. The up man on the return, but this is going to start Kent State out with terrific operating position, Gerard, as we take a look at quarterback Nick Holly, the fifth-year senior. That's right. Shorten the field for your offense is what the defense wants to do, and special teams did his part. Granted, it was a poor kick, and Miles will learn to stay away from the football, even though he was able to recover it. It was a rough day offensively for Kent State down at Clemson, South Carolina last week. Now, Holly on that straight quarterback run. Holly with space. He'll accelerate inside the five. Touchdown, Nick Holly. Kent State, first snap of the afternoon. If you're the Howard Bison, you do not let what took place last week fool you in regards to Holly's ability to run the football. He is a converted running back who's been asked to play QB. And as you see right here, he does an excellent job of reading and establishes himself with the option, says, hey, I can keep it. And then what does he do? He takes it to the house. Great job on the part of Nick Holly of running that rock. As you see it again, breaking tackles. You cannot arm tackle this man. You have to bring him down with force and effort. Arm tackling will not get the job done. And give Kent State credit, Michael, in that they got beat soundly last week, but they're playing with energy and effort thus far in this game. Wide receivers and running backs, too, running downfield with uh, Nick Holly getting blocks on. And now Shane Hines to add the PAT. Hines will do that, one of the best at Kent State history. So a quick seven put on the board. One play is all it took Nick Holly to dash 38 yards to the house as Holly showed some of that speed. Took it to the end zone. Quick seven up in Kent State lead when we get back.
Still don't it? Yes, uh, I like that. Good way to say it. Yeah, you want to touch upon the emotional let, well, not the emotional, but just dealing with high expectations and coming off a row. You talk about Kent State now? Well, well no, more so Howard. Howard. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's. Emotional victory last week. And how do you respond to that? He might be up here in the booth. booth. I believe he I don't is. Know. No, no. <laughs> That's not him either. No. Well, he's. I think. Why don't you hey, run down, run down, and ask the SID where Don Treadwell is? Run down and ask Barry Cementi where the Treadwell is. Is he up here? Is he up here? I don't, I don't see him on the side. He's not. Well, all they wear the, uh, the blue and gold in favor of the Kent State Golden Flashes, of course, really enjoying that 38-yard touchdown run from quarterback Nick Holly, Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, and, of course, Gerard, uh, Kent State without head football coach Paul Haynes in his fifth year. Haynes with uh, a medical issue that he wanted to get taken care of, so going to miss a few weeks. At least that's the word here today on head coach uh, Paul Haynes. Don Treadwell, his offensive coordinator, and uh, that Gerard and I spoke to at length this week has taken over uh, for Paul Haynes here in the interim. And he has to be very impressed, Coach Haynes and Treadwell, what they just saw. Complimentary football at his best. Three and out on defense. Special teams gets great field position and offense. First play of the series takes it to the house. Very impressive start for Kent State. Yeah, a minute and 26 seconds in. Shane Hines has got the football on the tee and he'll boom away his second kickoff uh, here of the early go and this is Jordan Scott on the return and that Kent State kick cover team all over that down there uh, forcing that was John Henry Bronzak Bronzak gotta love those guys that play specials Gerard <laughs> you and I both been there and you, you gotta have a little bit different mentality don't you? Yeah you definitely have to have that <laughs> all out will be willing to do anything and everything mentality and yeah. great job and coverage on the part of Kent State right there, pinning right. the Bison inside the 20. Partner, as we look at Mike London, okay, his team comes off a huge, huge win, as we said, over an FBS squad last week. How did he have to temper enthusiasm this week as we look at that first down call from Phil Yaw, and he has busted free. Phil Yaw in Kent State territory where he stepped out of bounds. Gerard, we do have a flag, but as we uh, kind of reconstruct what uh, is going to go on here, probably a... Probably a, a personal, probably a infraction on uh, on Howard. And more than likely a holding call, but great job on the part of Philyaw. No containment. What do you do? You take it outside. Well, Anthony Philyaw last week ran for uh, 71 yards, also caught three passes. 1,230 yards last week. But again, Gerard, Mike London, you know, temper, and th temper enthusiasm this week. Everybody was patting Howard on the back. Great job, Bison. Yeah, keep winning every week against FBS. How does he deal with that? Well, that's the hardest thing to deal with because you hope your team doesn't rest on his laurels because when they saw last week and how Clemson beat Kent State, they're probably coming to this game saying, oh, we got this, and you can never have that mentality. And so far the penalties are displaying that they may possess that mentality. First to 20, run that zone read again with uh, Desmond Wortham. Wortham is a uh, fifth-year graduate student. Been in this program. He ran for 31 yards last week. So Wortham will get the football, but the bellwether, the guy you just saw, keep an eye on Anthony Philyaw. He's terrific. Right. He has breakaway capability, and you wonder when he will get injected back into the game to provide that dynamic ability that you just saw on display with the previous run that was called back. All right. This is now second and 19 for Kalen Newton. Going to come underneath and work that throw outside the numbers that is uh, hauled in. Making that grab for Howard was Devon Johnson. 
Johnson making the catch. Short gain there as Kent State got on him. And this is exactly what you want to do for Kent State, Jim Jones, in that you make the tackle, do not miss, because Howard is excellent in the open field, making guys miss and picking up those run-after-catch yardage. Yeah, they run with two backs here, so Kalen Newton facing his uh, third, uh, second consecutive third down. This is third and 15. Newton almost had that picked off by Nick Faulkner. Oh, how about Faulkner, the sophomore out of Kenton McKinley High School, as he thought maybe, I, 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 hey, this football is going to give me an opportunity to run to the house. Yeah, Faulkner shows you that he has the ability to play some volleyball as well. Now, you wish he were intercepted that for the Kent State Golden Flashes, but you got to appreciate the ability to be an athlete to climb the ladder and knock that football down. So second consecutive punt for uh, Damon Gillespie in the second consecutive punt out of his end zone. Last one he hit, he didn't get to turn over well. Uh, that's a little bit better. Zaquan Tyson for Kent State. Tyson will battle his way to the 38-yard line. 31-yard boot is all, five-yard return. This is the second consecutive Kent State possession, Gerard. It's going to start at Howard's 38-yard line. It only took Nick Holly one play to put seven on the board. <laughs> That's certainly not the recipe for success if you are the Bison in that you want to get some positive plays on offense. And when the special teams is asked to do this duty, you have to get a much better effort out of your punter. And if you're Kent State, you're saying thank you again for this excellent field position. Yeah, and, and Gerard, last week, and Mike London, you've said this week, hey, uh, tip of the big cap to the offense, because now last week against UNLV, this Howard defense relinquished 564 yards of offense, and yet they were able to come out with a win. Holly will trigger that bubble screen. Justin Rankin made the grab as they split Rankin out of the backfield. Rankin made the catch. He got a quick eight. And as you well know, you can give up a lot of yards on defense, but your offense has to be efficient. And so far with two drives, we have not seen that efficiency from the Bison. And right here, Holly does a great job of delivering the ball out because he's been questioned whether or not he can pass it. But right there, he shows you that he does have the ability to throw the rock. Yeah, last week against Clemson, it was a big talking point. Nick Holly, one of four passing for two yards. Yeah. That will not move the register at all. But to his now, credit, doing better. Out of the pistol look. Staying on the ground is Kent State. As uh, Holly will uh, run the football with Justin Rankin. Gerard, we were impressed with Rankin last year. Well, as a uh, freshman, had 846 yards of total offense. And like you know, we know Paul Haynes and uh, Don Chartwell really, really liked. And they were really excited about him coming into his sophomore year. And what I like about Justin, he's a compact body, but he runs with power, and he also has the ability to make you miss as well. Chris White and Johnny Woods, pair of wideouts up top. I get the football to the, uh, the big fella, because Sean Gamble is he'll bull his way for the first down. Gerard, keep an eye on this young man. 250 pounds, and he goes both ways, partner. <laughs> that he does. That's what we call old school right there. That's exactly what you want for Kent State, a down and distance that's that is manageable. And in the process, pick up that first down. And also what I like, Michael, is that they are allowing the clock to work with them because they do understand at some point, Kalen Newton and company will get their act together. So keep them off the field while you can. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, that's probably the M.O. You're exactly right. Now, first and ten. Holly off that play fake. Keep the football. Got about three. So as we said, this defense uh, for... The, uh, the Howard Bison, they gave it up a lot. Keep an eye on 52 there, that young man, Richard Johnson. He's a young man from uh, right nearby Cleveland, Gerard. Local John player. Hay High School. So all of you Cleveland uh, Senate League fans will recall uh, Richard Johnson. He had, a, he had a big one last week with six tackles for uh, Howard. Yeah, and prior to the game starting, I saw him talking to several other players from Kent that are from the Cleveland area as mm -hmm. well, catching up. Now, Holly looking to put it up. And then a fire outside the numbers. Rankin with a grab. Touchdown, Kent State. And that's an example where the scouting report does you a disservice. Because you have to imagine coming into this game, the defense is saying for the Bison, Holly will not throw the football. He will not throw the football. But what you've seen today on two occasions as Rankin splits out and you get the mismatch with the linebacker, as Rankin receives the ball and then takes it to the house, is that Holly can throw the football. So tear up that scout report and reestablish the idea that he cannot throw because he 
obviously can. And great job on the part of Holly again of delivering that football for the TD to Rankin. Shane Hines will add his second PAT here of the early go and a quick 14-0 Kent State lead as uh, Nick Holly and Justin Rankin. Well, Rankin coming out of the backfield here, Gerard. Yeah, credit the offensive line for the goal to provide the time necessary for Holly to survey the entire football field and make that pass. 14-0 Kent State back to Dick Stadium in a moment. Beautiful home opener for the Kent State Golden Flashes and uh, students have turned out in kind and well, Nick Holly and the Kent State offense uh, doing work here early on with this 14 nothing lead. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry. Uh, Gerard, we played five minutes and 31 seconds and Shane Hines has got the football on the tee at the 35 to kick off for the third time already. Now, I'd imagine a lot of people thought the score would be the opposite and that it would be the Bison as opposed to the Golden Flashes. But give credit again to this Kent State team of having a short memory of what took place last week against Clemson. This Guy Lamagne on this kickoff return. A little bit better field position for Howard as they'll start from the 23-yard line. So Kalen Newton, if you're just joining us, he's the 18-year-old uh, the true freshman, younger brother of... Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton. And he was a MEAC Rookie of the Week and the Co-Offensive Player of the Week, this young man, for that dazzling performance he put on against uh, UNLV. They came in as a 42-point underdog last week, Gerard, for those that like those sort of things. And they registered the 43-40 win. Now Newton's going to go up top, and he's got that throw right on time. A racing inside the five on that grab for Howard on that big, big play was Jaquez Ezer. Got pushed out of bounds at the two-yard line. And this is what you call selling the run fake. And Newton does an excellent job of doing just that. And Ezer has to start today. Does what he has to do, which is get down the football field. You have to do a much better job if you can't stay of not vacating the middle of football field. There is no business or reason for the safety to be running up. Your job is to protect the middle of the football field. Poor decision making and not reading and doing your keys on that potential on that particular play for the Golden Flashes. It's a 75 yard uh, big lightning bolt. Time on the field. Kalen Newton to Jaquez Ezard. And Ezard is playing today because uh, Jason Collins, one of their top receivers, not able to go for Howard. <laughs> you asked to fill in, that's the type of production you want. But I have to go back to it, Michael. One of the things that will just drive a coaching staff crazy is when we tell you to do a technique and you don't do the technique, it's really simple, basic football. You have no business being in the middle of, of, of the, you have to be in the middle of football field. No reason to treat up. You have to stay back and do your responsibility, and I'm pretty sure Jarrell Foster will get an earful and then some for that. Yeah, Demetrius Monday and Jarrell Foster trying to uh, finally run Ezra down, which they did, but now just that quickly. As you look at Jarrell Foster, terrific corner for Kent State. Phil Yaw trying to battle to the goal line on that carry, and Kent State's going to stand him up and send him back. This Flash's defense, we saw at times last year, Gerard, were very, very impressive. As uh, that front four, big John Cunningham anchoring things, and Devontae Lee also uh, on that stop. Yeah, and great penetration on the part of Dominique Hill as well. That throw to the end zone is hauled in in traffic. And making that grab uh, for Howard as Newton was able to hit him. As uh, David uh, Terrell made that catch in traffic. And Michael, tell in of this catch how Terrell extends his body backwards. Let's check that. Kyle Anthony as he bends his body backwards to make that play. It was Anthony that made the grab, big six foot three receiver. And he used all six three of <laughs> that to make it. A lot of fireworks going on here early on. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. And they're going to call that back.
I don't know. Did anybody catch uh, what that penalty call was? Because uh, it was not very distinctive or clear. I thought it might have been. And Mike London's not happy. An illegal, uh, an illegal lineman. I got caught running into the end zone. So now it'll still be second to goal, but this time for the 16-yard line for Kayla Newton. Devon Johnson and Des Wortham are the running backs. Second and goal from the 16. Newton will throw the fade to the corner. A lot of bumping, and that is hauled in and caught. Touchdown as Kayla Newton went right back to Kyle Anthony with that six foot four in size who made the grab. And Demetrius Monday is pleading this case, but you're not going to be heard when you're in this situation fighting for the football. The wide receiver the offensive player is always going to get the benefit of the doubt. A nice grab on the part of Kyle Anthony. Well, the third touchdown throw in this uh, early go of game number two on the year. So trying to close this power deficit now to just seven is Dakota Lobovsky. The previous play of a touchdown is under further review. All touchdowns are reviewable, as we know, around the college game, Gerard, and uh, this one is going to be looked at. Uh, Mike London's already had a, a couple of, <laughs> of definitive conversations with the uh, the officiating crew today. Yes, he is, and see, again, selling the fake is Newton. You have the push off. The question is, did he control the football? On the way down, appears to be the case for me. Let's see if the booth officials agree. Right here, you see control. But you were alluding to that, uh, you know, there was there was a lot of contact yes, there, there but but it looks like that there is definitive control there, and uh, that that pass is hauled in by Kyle Anthony. Certainly, because that is the key right here. Because at this point, yes, Monday has a case. He was literally thrown down by <laughs> Anthony, but chances are you're not going to get that call. It's going to go to the offensive player. So this is uh, being looked at uh, the gentleman with the white hat your game uh, referee today and this officiating crew is Matt Pakowski and he'll give us this call in a moment looks like it's uh, real clean touchdown catch Anthony Miller yeah, from the angle that we're working with it looks really up field confirmed touchdown so yeah confirmed uh, for Mike London and his offense so uh, they went 77 yards on that touchdown drive. And of course, the big one was the 75 yard hookup from Kayla Newton to that fleet slot receiver, Jaquez Ezard. So Dakota Lobovsky on to attempt the PAT, and he will connect on that. The cut catch state's lead to 14 7. Here is uh, Gerard, three touchdowns on the board in the first six minutes and 27 seconds of this football game. Yeah, the fireworks have been unleashed. But if you look at the score and why it has been predicated, it's been due to big plays and defensive players not doing their job and reading their keys. It's really been that simple. But as we see the touchdown again, here's the push off and the throwdown that Monday's complaining about. But you're not going to get that call. Credit Anthony for keeping his concentration. And find a way to haul in that pass for the score. So again, that cuts the uh, Kent State advantage to 14-7. Uh, we apologize. We'll continue to work feverishly on uh, keeping our uh, our score bug for you consistently. The gang uh, take taking uh, care of that. So uh, three touchdowns already in the first six minutes. It's some change in this football game and. For the first time this afternoon, Dakota Lobovsky now with the football on the tee. As Kent State on that return has got Tavius Price. And that Lobovsky kick is going to come up short to the 20-yard line. Kent State going to get a good return out of that. As on that kickoff return for Kent State, that was Zaquan Tyson, one of the up men. Tyson uh, handles the punt return chores and a solid return there will give Nick Holly good operating position. 
Once again, excellent field position for Nick Holly and the offensive crew to see what they can do. It's been a question of can the Bison stop Nick Holly from passing because we thought it was going to be an issue of running. But so far, Holly has shown you that, hey, he's a dynamic player as well and that he's a dual threat, just like his opposition in Kalen Newton. Yeah, he's led a pair of 38-yard touchdown drives. And again, off that, that zone read, that first option in the zone read, Kent State running the football. That's the big fella, Miles Washington, on the carry, and he got a quick six. 225-pounder, junior out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Look at this loaded backfield look, Gerard. Miles Washington, where's number 26? You got Will Matthews on the football field as well. Holly the gun, and that's uh, way too tall as he was looking for his wide receiver. Cavius Price is going to bring up a third down and short. It's a good look at Price, uh, diminutive. Five, 670 pounder out of my Manatee, uh, Bradenton, Florida, Manatee High School. And that's always a challenging throw when you're dealing with a short stature receiver and throwing an out route. So we're going to understand that Holly's difficult in making that pass, but you do have to come down and throw that ball in the catchable area so Price can't make a play. All right, out of the pistol look now. On that third down call, Justin Rankin, he didn't get there. Nice job by. The front seven of uh, Howard as they were able to get that uh, stuffed up. Richard Johnson, that young man we showed you out of Cleveland, along with Isaiah Flood on the hits. Yeah, Michael, it appears that Howard has settled down on defense, and they realize that they're in a football game in similar fashion to the offense. So, guy, there's Richard Johnson again. All of you from uh, the Cleveland Senate League, John Hay High School for that. Talented defensive end. Guy Lamagne wearing that number one for Howard. To receive this punt of Derek Adams. And Adams hung it high, and Lamagne will fair catch it at the 10 yard line. All right, 7 3 left in this opening quarter. Hope you're enjoying it. We've got a lot of fireworks already. Kent State with a 14 7 lead on Howard. 14-7, Kent State on top of uh, Howard. Here's uh, going past halfway point of this first quarter. You get a good look at uh, Kalen Newton. Newton, this true freshman quarterback, and again, the brother of uh, NFL Carolina Panthers standout, Cam Newton. And we've got movement and flags before that snap. False start looks like on Howard. False start. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Right, there's a false start, and uh, that is a fourth penalty uh, on Howard in this 14-7 deficit. So make it first at 15 for Newton. Going to run that zone read, and that's Anthony Filial. Filial still alive. Look at the power of Phil Yaw to the 41 yard line. And we got another flag down though, and we'll see if this comes back. But Phil Yaw is very, very impressive. Yes, Phil Yaw has been extremely dynamic thus far when he's got his hands on the football. And you wonder why Coach London has not given him the ball more often. Holding, offense, number 12. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Hey, man, let's go, man. You saw the call from uh, Matt Pakowski. That's a hold and took away uh, Mike London lamenting that. What was a uh, a huge, huge burst from uh, a talented tailback, Anthony Filiaw. Right, you see Filiaw wide hold, hits it, and his running posture is just smooth. And you like how he runs, but you can't have the penalties. That's the issue here. Self-inflicted pain on the part of the Bison. I've stopped two excellent runs on the part of Phil Yaw. This is football on the 13-yard uh, line now. Stay with the ground game and run Desmond Wortham on that Kent State defense all over that. Uh, making that uh, hit Nick Falker 
Faulkner's been very active. Faulkner wears number 17, 245-pound DN, Gerard. And watch Faulkner as he comes across the field and chases down Wortham. That's the type of effort that you want out of your defensive players. Also had some help from James Alexander as well as you look at Faulkner. Now Newton to keep the football. It floats his throw for Philyaw. That falls it complete. Jarrell Foster wears number 23 for Kent State was closing off that corner. Yeah, you may want to keep your eye on Phil y'all when he's on the football field because he has shown that he can be a threat be it the run or the pass. But interesting enough Michael is that we haven't seen any design runs for Newton. Mm -hmm. well, you're right not yet. But it's in the package believe it us. Certainly is. <laughs> All right, third and eight that line to make is at the 20 Newton to put it up. Theo E. Boys Bay got him from behind to take him down. Good, good hit by E. Boys Bay, the 260 pound junior out of the state of Georgia. And that's the key when you have a dynamic quarterback, you have to collapse the pocket on him, make him feel the pressure. And then once you're able to make the play, you do just what Theo did bring Newton down. Do not allow him to get to that second and third level because when he gets there, he's extremely dangerous. Yeah, very, very high is this Kent State coaching staff uh, on E. Boys Bay. So you've seen the two defensive ends have an impact early. Sean Faulkner and uh, E. Boys Bay. Gillespie will hit it and got it to turn over. Zaquan Tyson from the midfield stripe. Six-yard return for Tyson. Kent State for the third time today here in the opening quarter is going to start in tremendous operating position. But uh, let's wait a minute. It looks like Zaquan Tyson. He got clipped from behind Gerard as he uh, started that punt return and is down. Yeah, it's certainly one of the dangers of being a ball carrier on the punt in particular because they're coming at you from various angles. So you never know which way you're going to get hit. And he ran to a crowd of players in the process of feeling that punt. Tyson yeah, certainly registered some discomfort there, as you can see, as he's attended to by the Kent State uh, athletic training staff. And you see it delivers it and right there. There's probably some issues, but the tail end of the play is just a crowd of people and you're getting hit from various angles and you fall on it incorrectly. Those type of things will happen in the course of a game. But so far, Kent State has been the beneficiary of great field position. As he Hobbles off the football field. Yeah, we certainly never going to speculate uh, on uh, on injuries at all as uh, Tyson being helped off the football field. And we will uh, do our best to check on him and effort where he's at physically. Now this Kent State offense holding this 14-7 lead going to get the football for the fourth time here, Gerard. Three of them have been the drive has started in Howard territory. Yeah, and to Howard's credit, they have settled down on the defensive end as far as establishing themselves in the trenches and not being pushed around and dominated by this much larger in size offensive line for the Golden Flashes. So Nick Holly off play action. Well, gunned his throw incomplete. Holly was uh, looking to uh, try to find his, his tight end. And that Shelfonte Butler, Shelfonte Butler, big target, six foot six, 255 pounder out of Cincinnati. And you appreciate the aggressive play call, but on some levels, do you reestablish the run and do what got you going earlier? Do you keep on relying on the pass? Because as we well know, Holly's a better runner than he is a thrower. Well, yeah, an outstanding defensive play there, as uh, you saw Howard's David Lee, who wears number 31, come up and. Watch Lee just snuff out Holly's opportunity to turn that back up, Gerard. Exactly. Penetration is the key to stopping anything on offense. Uh, with his 14-7 uh, lead, uh, Nick Holly now and uh, Kent State looking at a third down and 14. That line to make the 34-yard line. Going to go run four wide receivers here. Holly, straight quarterback draw. He got taken down at the 40-yard line. Uh, in on that hit for Howard uh, at the 40-yard line was Devin Rollins. Rollins who wears number 40, that, uh, that Mike linebacker. 
And not surprised with the quarterback draw safe play, not asking Holly to do too much. Picked up some positive yards. Now you ask your special teams to come onto the football field, pin them back, and hopefully you get the ball again. If you're going to go to flashes with nice field position, if the defense is able to do another three and out. Sure. Now Guy Lamagne uh, again. There you see Lamagne wearing that number one at the 10 yard line to accept this punt of Derek Adams, who's on the Ray Guy watch list. Last week at Clemson, he had four punts of 50 yards or better. And you see he'll boot that with the nose down, and Lamagne will fair catch it at the six-yard line. All right, so we'll keep it right here on this change of possession with this 14-7 Kent State lead, and uh, flashes have been flying around some, Jerron. <laughs> yes, they have. They've established a three-and-out scenario on multiple Legal formation. against this Howard Bison offense. Five-yard penalty. Now, the one thing that they have struggled Replay, with is out. containing Phil Yaw. And it'll be interesting to see if Coach London and his staff will employ more of Phil Yaw on this particular drive. Yeah, Phil Yaw hit the big one. That he the uh, penalties. Yeah, it's, he's, he's hit two big, one as, two big ones as he's busted loose twice. And again, now it's looking as if a uh, penalty on Kent State, and they're going to re-kick from the 46-yard line. So, again, Derek Adams standing at his own 40 to boot this away to Guy Lamagne of Howard. Again, he'll keep that nose down. Lamagne will fair catch it at the 12-yard line. Not much difference <laughs> Not than we all. saw the initial effort, right? Not at all. 14-7, Kent State with the uh, seven-point first quarter lead and a couple of quick touchdowns before Howard responded. Great to have you with us. I'm Michael Regai, my partner uh, Gerard Cherry, producer Jeff Bentley, director Mike Simons, all of our crew as you take a look uh, inside uh, this Howard Bison huddle. And again, uh, keep uh, amplifying it. Can't tell you enough, this, this Howard squad last week went out to Las Vegas and beat uh, the FBS Rebels of UNLV from the Mountain West. Set shockwaves through college football. This is Kalen Newton. Uh, a terrific stop off the corner. The Apache came up, uh, Jamal Parker, to make that hit. He's made a position change this year, Gerard, but Parker has been real good at that Apache spot. He certainly has been, and that is an excellent open field tackle on the part of Parker because you're a one-on-one -on -one situation you beat the receiver then you're able to bring down a very elusive runner and fill you you have to be impressed with that play on the part of Parker second and eight against that pressure Newton will fire a strike well he delivered a dart to Kyle Anthony that's at the 35 yard line that's 20 yards at a first down and this is what we call being picturesque in the pocket as Newton stands there with confidence and then delivers a strike to his receiver and that is what you want out of Newton, that ability to deliver the rock in that manner and fashion. Uh, Newton's going to just throw this away as he was getting pressure uh, from uh, Sean Faulkner, who was pressured from the outside. I'm going to bring up a second down. So a lot of tempo at time. You know, it seems like after, after successful plays, after first downs, they'll get lined up and snap that football quickly. Well, that's what you want to do. You always want to apply the pressure to the defense. Don't allow them to get the opportunity to adjust to catch their cells into a position where they can recover. Put the pressure on them. Nothing wrong with that. I love that type of tempo. On second and 10, Phil Yaw trying to spin his way out of trouble. Was taken down, though. Was not uh, able to fool Mandela Lawrence Burke, who wears number 28, had six tackles last week. Young sophomore out of Steubenville, Ohio. Yeah, and the Golden Flashes have realized when Phil Yaw is in the game, make sure that you have contain it make sure you set the edge because if you do not he will exploit you well now here now when they get behind the sticks Gerard this is third and 13 let's see if Kayla Newton's able to convert Newton gonna float that fade on this near sideline and good coverage by Kent State there as he was looking to uh, once again hit Kyle Anthony uh, Jarrell Foster and Demetrius Monday uh, I, the, two of the best pair of corners that we have in the MAC, Gerard. Certainly, experience helps in that particular case right there. Newton's established that Anthony is his go-to guy, but give credit to Monday for having the ability to make a play on the ball. A 
Well, Lobovsky has got to hit this away again. Well, he hits this line drive shot. And coming up is Price on that return. Cavius Price. Not loving that football hit the ground. Love that about kick returners, Gerard. Boy, special team coaches love that too, don't they? <laughs> Certainly, because the bad things happen when the ball hits the ground from a field position standpoint, and typically to hit your player, and next thing you know, you turn the ball right back to the team that just kicked it to you. But yes, nice job right there of filling the ball and getting positive yards. So that was Price there after we saw on the last punt exchange. Zaquan Tyson went down with... Obviously looked like a lower leg injury for Kent State, so uh, KVS Price handling the chores there. Folks, this is the, uh, what, fifth possession of the opening quarter for these Kent State Golden Flashes. Holly, start that uh, option left, kept the football, did Nick Holly, and got about five on that first down carry. And I imagine the Bison are saying to themselves, this guy does not go down like a typical quarterback running option. And the reason why is that that guy is a converted running back who has the ability to play quarterback. Yeah, uh, Holly in his career, Kent State, running back, slot receiver, He's done been it all. split out wide. He really has. And after injuries to three quarterbacks last year, that young man out of Toledo Whitmer High School played the state championship game in Division I here in Ohio. Nick Holly said, hey, Coach Haynes. I'll quarterback your football team for you. And did a very fine job. Off play action. Holly going to pull the football down. Nick Holly's got a first down. That's 12. They make it to 17 yards at a first down for Nick Holly as he was staring down there third and long. And he had time and ever, forever to make this pass. But once you don't see it, don't force it. Great decision making on the part of Holly. Just pick up the positive yards with your legs because you do possess the ability to do just that. Well, Kent State uh, here in the late stages of the first quarter, keeping the drive alive on the legs of their fifth year senior, Nick Holly. Well, again, with uh, that three back look with Holly, going to run the reverse. A lot of real estate, Cavius Price. Price will speed inside the 10 and knock down at the eight yard line. We do have a flag though, back near the line of scrimmage. What a convoy Price had, Gerard. <laughs> yes, convoy is the optimal word. And it's about basic football again, maintaining containment. Illegal formation on the offense, number 68. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. Well, Gerard, that's that's a legal formation for Kent State as they tried to set that up. And I, I believe I didn't catch the number. Did he did he call one of the linemen? He called a lineman. We talk about basic football. That is just quarterback exchange with the hiking little football. You have to be lined. And you just took away a great play, a great play call on the part of Coach Treadwell of making that play and exploiting the well, over pursuit of the bison all right mike marinelli was one that was called so was he was he a step back off the line of scrimmage must have been because said resulting in too many in the backfield exactly. that's the end of the first quarter and those type of plays you cannot afford to have if you were the golden flashes in that it just kills the morale you had a great play and why was it brought back not because of holding but because of simply not thinking yeah a lot of big plays have been negated today all right week two of the football season we're through one quarter. Kent State's Golden Flashes in their home opener. We got a touchdown uh, from Nick Holly in the touchdown throw to Justin Rankin. Anthony Miller on that TD for uh, Howard. 14-7 Kent State after one. Absolutely beautiful September afternoon, right? Couldn't dial it up any better for college football. Dick Stadium where the Kent State Golden Flashes with this 14-7 lead. Now that uh, that quick hitter uh, ought to that uh, that triple option look for Kent State as they're able to uh, bust that out of there. And now they're going to go quickly on that carry is Will Matthews. So Matthews got the call. Give it to Matthews again. This time he got stood up, though. Stood up at the uh, 32 yard line. And he'll spot it a little bit closer to the 30 yard line. So this is a good look at uh, Will Matthews, Gerard. He's a. 205 pounds sophomore. So Kent State, I mean, conceivably, they use six running backs in yeah. his offense. Right, right now, Will's coach is telling him, hit the hole. Don't bounce it, hit the hole because the run is designed for you to 
go right up the middle and not bounce it outside. Yeah, that's uh, of course, uh, Don Treadwell is the offensive coordinator and now the interim head coach and handles the quarterbacks as well. Holly off the play fake. Nick Holly in open space. Well, excellent tackle out of that secondary. Nice one on one hit for Howard as uh, coming up and able to uh, make that stop for Howard on that safety spot was Marcellus Emerson. And this is the luxury of having a quarterback that can run the football and that if there's nothing there to pass, if you have an opening, you take the positive yards by running. Well, that'll move the sticks now as uh, you see back in the uh, that offensive formation for Kent State. Will Matthews. He's in that pistol look now. Well, Matthews and Justin Rankin, uh, both of them move. It's going to be a false start procedure on Kent State. They got Nate Warnock. Warnock uh, got the start today at that right guard spot. This is a good look at Big Nate. 290 pounder transferred into the program out of St. Joe's College after uh, they dropped football. Yeah, and Big Nate is saying I didn't hear the play called in the huddle, I guess, because <laughs> I thought it was on one, not two. Now Rankin in the pistol look right behind Nick Holly. Holly will keep the football and pound his way to the 25 yard line back to the original line of scrimmage. And what I've noticed in this drive, Michael, is that Kent State is putting more effort into getting positive yards on the first down as opposed to taking a chance with a pass. Yeah. Well, that's uh, Nick Holly, his seventh carry uh, here this afternoon. Holly for uh, now 68 yards on his seven totes of the football. Last week, it was a he carried it 10 times against that Clemson defense for 53 yards. But again, it was, you know, it was just a, a real rugged offensive day. Kent State just couldn't get anything solidified. Second to 10 now. Holly got a gun in the seam and left that throw short. Holly was trying to uh, throw that seam rod. He was looking for Trey Harrell. Harold, the 185 pound sophomore, and it's going to come now on third down. And you appreciate the effort on the part of Holly of having the conviction to throw the football, but I would like to see him rolling more. And if there's nothing there, not forcing it into a double coverage situation like you saw right there. Aaron Walker, the uh, true freshman, was in coverage for Howard. So looking at third down now, third and long for Nick Holly. Two of four so far for. Holly and Kent State on these uh, third down converts. Blitz coming. Holly guns that throw. Touchdown. Kent State. Oh, he fired that bullet. As he was able to connect with Raekwon James. James made that grab out of the slot, and Holly drilled him from 25 out. And that's how you throw to the middle of the football field. No one in the middle. It's been vacated. You take advantage of that. Excellent read on the part of Holly. Great grab on the part of Raycon James. James making the 25-yard uh, the touchdown catch. J Richard Johnson was a, about a half step away uh, from uh, Nick Holly as he was coming hard from that, uh, that defensive end spot. And the willingness to stay in the pocket because you know you're going to get hit. Yep. But this is a converted running back. He doesn't mind getting <laughs> hit. <right. laughs> he, he probably doesn't feel like he's in the game until he takes uh, three couple, or four, right? Yeah, a couple shots that <laughs> rock his world a little bit. So Mike London's defense there, they, uh, they allowed Raekwon James to come out of the slot. So Nick Holly has uh, authored his second touchdown pass of the day. That's a good start for him here now because, of course, as we said last week, he just two yards passing on one completion uh, at Clemson. PAT is added by the, uh, the talented uh, Shane Hines, and the lead will stretch to 21-7. Nick Holly throws his second touchdown pass of the day. This one to Raekwon James. Back to Dick Stadium 
after Holly and James put seven more on the board for Kent State. Kent State extends the lead now to a couple of touchdowns at 21-7 as I know you're enjoying all the, the color and the atmosphere that college football provides. Great to have you along on this wonderful afternoon out of Kent, Ohio. I'm Michael Regai, my partner Gerard Cherry, all of our ESPN crew. And well, Gerard, uh, I think Mike London's probably going to be talking uh, with his squad about the you know, defensive side of things. We said they got... Uh, they got carved up pretty good last week at uh, UNLV, but their offense was able to bail them out. And that's not been the case today because it's been three and out, three and out, and three and out for this Bison offense today. And you have to give much credit to the Kent State Golden Flashes for one containing Newton as well as Phil Now uh, This is Jordan Scott from the five-yard line. <laughs> Scott with almost like a stutter step delayed return. Let's check it. It's Jaquez uh, Ezzard. Ezard, who uh, caught that big 75-yard uh, floating throw to set up the touchdown uh, back in the uh, the first quarter for Mike London. Yeah, and Jaquez was trying to sell that I'm going to one direction and come back the other. Is that what he was doing? He was certainly doing that. <laughs> he was kind of, you know, <laughs> like, there was okay. nobody around him. He's giving the leg, <laughs> taking it away. I thought for a minute he was just going to run out of bounds. Oh, Howard with the football again, so hope you're enjoying uh, seeing this young, talented freshman, Kalen Newton. Newton will stay on the ground with Anthony Filia, a terrific job by Kent State to turn that in. Sam Thomas, uh, a linebacker who wears number 35, he turned that back in very nicely. Exactly. There's Sam. Sam's responsible for containment, and that's exactly what he did. And when you play sound team defense, Good things can happen. When you vacate, the premises is not where you're supposed to be. That's when the busted big plays take place. Now Newton will trigger the out. And had a little too much uh, on it and overthrew his intended wide receiver, Kyle Anthony. Those two hooked up for the touchdown in the opening quarter. And Devontae Lee providing the pressure. And that's exactly what you have to do. You cannot allow any quarterback, especially one with the ability of Newton, to get comfortable. You have to apply and get that penetration. Just going to bring up a third down at 10 now. Newton will keep the football. Oh, he got crunched, but he's got a first down. Boy, he took a big, big hit as uh, laying the wood on him was free safety Quan Robinson, former quarterback at Glenville High School in Cleveland. And you watch the tail end of this play as Newton goes into the slide. This is where Quan delivers the blow, and he wasn't technically down yet. Mike London's out in the football field. You get a good look at Quan Robinson. This is his first career start by the bye. Well, actually, let's, excuse me, let me take that back. Last week against Clemson was his first career start, and he excelled. So he's getting another start here today, one that... Uh, uh, that uh, that free safety job, Gerard. And also had an interception last week. One of the positives on the defensive end. Well, you know, yeah, last week. at Jeff Burrow, the co-defensive coordinator, we had a long conversation with Jeff. As you see, Mike London continuing to state his case. But uh, Burrow very, very high on his secondary. A lot of young men that fly around right, like and that's hit. what you want. You want a situation where you ask guys when the chances presents itself, make a play, get a hit, and that's what Quan did. Well, Newton's got to come off the football field as uh, they'll keep it on the ground with Des Wortham. Kalen Johnson is now in at the quarterback spot as Newton's be a check down. Now, Johnson is a 205-pound senior out of Pearland, Texas. So let's see how this changes the dynamic now of this offense as Kalen Johnson is in for Kalen Newton. Now keep the football on the ground. That's a talented Anthony Phil, y'all. Why did you see him lower his shoulder at the 45-yard line on Quan Robinson? Oh, a little bit of woofing going on there. Robinson's the one that laid the hit on uh, Kalen Newton. And as Phil, y'all gets the football, he says, I recognize you. Take that. To give Juan Robinson credit for not getting fully ran over and bringing down a very elusive runner in Philly. Wortham on the carry. And that's Kent State uh, front four. That stays again a little bit chippy there. You see big John Cunningham, who wears number 90, the 295-pounder. 
got word of them on the ground, but uh, yeah, the temper's starting to to flare a little bit both yeah. ways. And yeah, both these teams realize they're in a very physical football game. As you see, Newton is still checking him out as he's trying to get his balance in. Now that zone read, Kalen Johnson, the quarterback, will keep the football. Well, look at Kent State run to the football. Coming up with that that big, big hit, James Alexander, that Mike linebacker. James Alexander's already graduated, Gerard. Well, watch how James reads the quarterback and then flows to the football. That is picture perfect on how you play the option on the part of Alexander. Something that uh, you'll find near and dear to your heart. He and his teammate, Dandy Johnson, this summer went on a trip to Belize. Hmm. And they, uh, they helped uh, to build a lot of uh, basketball courts and what have you for kids. Wortham made that catch in traffic, but he was swarmed on on that third and ten as coming up to make that hit for uh, Kent State. That uh, was Sam Thomas again, that Apache. And you like the effort of Johnson of avoiding the rush and Bale D to make a pass play right here to Worthen. But this is what happens when you have positive tackling. Looking at a fourth down and almost nine, Gerard, and uh, Mike Love is going to say Mike London down by a couple of touchdowns in Kent State territory, but he set the punt team out. Wise decision because there's still a lot of football left, and you don't want to once again give excellent field position to that Kent State offense. Cavius Price for the injured Zaquan Tyson. Price getting set for his second punt return possibly, but a lot of whistles. A lot of whistles. I think that play clock might have hit zero on uh, Howard. Yep, exactly what happened, well and that's going to cost uh, Howard five. Fourth down. Hey, you might be running your punt team out there, but you still got to be cognizant of the, the time. No, that play clock's going. Yeah, and that's a part of the indecision because on one hand, you're saying to yourself, we can pick this up. But at the last second, you make that change. It puts the punt team into rest, and this is what happens. Now for the midfield strike, boy, that snap was low. Lebowski got it away. And Kavius Price will fair catch at the 17-yard line. Kent State's football, when we get back, Nick Holly in the Flash's offense try to add to their 21-7 lead over Howard. Kent State with the football again, and uh, the Flash, the mascot symbolic of Kent State pride here on this campus. Uh, we're certainly hoping to drum some more excitement up and well, kind of a different bag. Both these teams came out of Gerard uh, Howard off that huge win over FBS uh, opponent UNLV and Kent State, you know, having to come back, uh, of course, gets the defending national champs last week and uh, took a pasting out of that zone read. Uh, Nick Holly will start with a run game here on first down and on that first down carry was a talented freshman that we told you about because Sean Gamble played both ways. Haven't seen him on defense as of yet, but had five carries for 21 yards last year. He's a big pounder, Gerard, at uh, 250 pounds. <laughs> yes, he is. And one of the ways you have to bring down a big pounder is by swarming to the football, and that's what the Bison did on that particular play. Well, we don't see a lot of this three-back look at college football, but look at Nick Holly. He's busted free. Holly very close to that first down line uh, to make at the 27-yard line. So, you know, you got the uh, almost a pistol look with that back lined up directly behind Holly and then two offset. That's the key today, Michael. Once you get into that second and third level of Holly, he is extremely difficult to bring down. So, fair that offensive line for giving him just enough space to get through that first wave to get to that second and third level. And they marked Holly just shy of the 27 yard line. And if they keep the football there, it's going to bring up third down to short. Which is the offensive coordinator's dream. Mm -hmm. Third and beyond manageable. <laughs> as long as you convert. Third down. Third down. <laughs> Makes this play calling much easier. Well, third down and call it a half yard, and Nick Holly will uh, power his way beyond that uh, that line to make to keep the drive alive. First down, Kent State. You want in those situations, do you bounce it out? Because you see right here, it's obvious it's going to be a third and short effort. 
and you're going to just try to get the pick up the first down. But do you bounce it? Do you take a chance? Probably not. Yeah, well, hey, listen, I mean, you know, he's throwing the two touchdown passes today. And he delivered the football well, you know, that first uh, with uh, Justin Rankin coming out of the backfield on kind of that circle route. And then he fired the, uh, the strike on a crossing route to Raquan James. Holly's going to put it up. He'll float that throw that's hauled in. And making that grab was Shelfonte Butler off a of play fake. And Butler was running free before he got tagged out of that, that secondary. Ty Freeland on the stop. <laughs> Ty Freeland brings down a big man in Butler. That is a great tackle. But again, Holly shows the ability to pass the football. 11 yard gain. Justin Rankin's only going to get a couple. Well, you see knifing through and uh, making that first contact uh, for Howard. Was, uh, that, uh, that linebacker, Devin Rollins, again. Rollins has been playing very good football. Yeah. Rollins has been very busy today. But what you like, again, for the Golden Flashes is the idea that you're getting positive yards on first down. Mm -hmm. well, many as six backs could touch the football today. Now, a little bit more conventional here. Four wide receivers and Rankin in the pistol look in the one back. Holly going to run that reverse again. Coming out of the slot in open space. And all the way down to the 20-yard line is Mike Kerrigan, the 175-pound sophomore. That's 29 yards. They set that, uh, that, that reverse toss up real well. And it's one thing to have a reverse work on you the first time, but when they run the same play on the second time and it still works, that's just a sign that you're not playing your keys and doing your responsibility. But give credit to the offensive line as well as the rest of that offense of selling the fake and at the same time exploiting the fact that there was no one outside of the cornerback being blocked in the boundary area. Yeah, that's the first touch for uh, Mike Kerrigan today, the speedster out of Tallahassee, Florida. So Rankin now in the pistol with Holly. That option pitch, Rankin, good cut down near the 15-yard line. And that's exactly what that play is designed to do. There's nothing there for Holly. Last resort, pitch to rock. That's exactly what you want to do. But the Bison have to do a much better job, Michael, of defending the boundary area and keeping contained. Basic mm -hmm. elements of football are not being played right now on defensive end. And to their credit, Kent State is exploiting it on the offensive end. When that edge isn't set defensively? Good luck. Yeah, a good way to put it, too. Big, big trouble usually for a defensive football team. Holly again. Now this time off that uh, that zone read principle will keep the football. He's got a first down as he battles down to the 10 yard line. And for Nick Holly on the afternoon, who said last week, Holly 10 carries for 53 against Clemson. He's already outdone that. He uh, had 63 yards in that opening quarter on the ground. And what you like about Holly is the ability to read his keys in the option game. Because had he had pitched the ball right there, it would have possibly have been a turnover because the defender on that particular play did defend the boundary. Yeah, better job that time for the Howard Bison. James will motion. Holly with heat on him. Look at end zone. Floats that throw that's batted away. He was looking for Chris White. White, the uh, the fifth year senior out of uh, Florida, and good to see Chris White back after a season ending leg injury. Uh, opening day last year at Penn State, and White missed the rest of the year. <laughs> you like the effort, and I must say, Michael, that Holly is starting to get his confidence in regards to throwing the football. That was a catchable ball thrown by Holly. And Ty Freeland again, we've called his name a couple of times. That backup free safety broke that up. Now second down and goal from just inside the 10. Holly with that late pitch. Trying to make that cut is Justin Rankin. Rankin got tracked and taken down by Devin Rollins again. That outstanding 50-year senior, Mike Linebacker. And that's how you play the option. You have to string the football out. As you see here, Holly has nowhere to go. But as a defensive player, you string it out and rely on your other defenders to hold up their part of their bargain. And they did just that. And Rollins again with another play on the football. This is third down and goal now for the seven-yard line. 
As we approach three and a half left and this play clock ticking down now Nick Holly's going to get him lined up. Trey Harrell Johnny Woods pair of the wide receivers Rankin is in trouble. Well he got belted at the nine yard line Gerard at that mesh point. Was there a little bit of indecisiveness there from Holly? It certainly was, but it was also coupled with the idea that you had great penetration on the part of the defensive line right there and that they were able to get into the backfield and force Holly to be indecisive in what he wanted to do. As you see right here, no blocking there. That's what, exactly what you're called to do. So give credit to Isaiah Flood for making the play. Kind of a win there for uh, the defense of Mike London. It's going to be a 26-yard field goal attempt for Shane Hines. And Hines uh, had that blocked. It was blocked. It picked up uh, by Howard as they were able to get a hand on that and keep Kent State off the board. Usually don't see that. Mm -hmm. Shane Hines had that, that field goal attempt banged uh, right back at him before he could get that lifted. Yeah, a couple of things you typically don't see in this play is one, it being blocked, that's rare. But then the other part of it is a return when the ball's going down the field. Howard football, when we get back, 21-7, Kent State with the lead. Wow. Action left. Well, Caleb Nude's a tough 185-pounder now. He lowered his shoulder and got eight. So good to see Newton back on the football field after he took that huge hit from Quan Robinson last possession. And what you like about that play, Michael, is the attitude that he brought with the tail end of the play in that, hey, you gave me a blow, I'm going to deliver one back to you once I now I'm back on this football field. Now, dude, with a pitch to Filio and look out. Anthony Filio with acceleration and see you later. 75 yards to the house. Anthony Filial of Howard. And it was only a matter of time before Anthony Filial would get the opportunity again to do just that, take it to the house. Very elusive runner. When he's in open field, get to that second, third level, you don't stand a chance of catching him. An excellent blocking on the part of Wortham right there, taking out Robinson. And then it's off to the races, and Filial wins it outright. Did you see receiver Kyle Anthony behind the play Ted with that arm up in the air? Well, Phil Yaw, again, folks, 205-pounder out of L.A. At the Redondo Union High School. And now adding uh, that PAT is Dakota Lebowski. And just like that, Gerard Cherry, Howard's right back into this one as uh, FCS All-American candidate is this young man right here, Anthony Phil Yaw. Yes, and if you have no one again in the boundary making containment, he's going to exploit you and take advantage of that, and you see it pulling away from defenders. Excellent speed, excellent effort, all on the part of the Bison offense and the running man himself, Phil Yaw. Well, Anthony Phil Yaw, dazzling. Now, last week, he went for uh, he went for 71 yards, did have a couple of TDs against UNLV, also caught three balls, Gerard. Today, today for Howard, Phil Yaw is at seven carries for 104 yards. That's a cool 17.7 .7 yards per tote. Yeah, and if you were able to account for the two penalties, he'd be over 200 yards yeah. right now at this moment in the game. Well, Mike London's squad, they, they, you know, they were teetering here a little bit yes. uh, at 14 zip, right? But they've managed to uh, get themselves right back into it. Remember, again, we keep referencing, but why not? As a 43-point underdog last week, they stunned the college football world by beating UNLV 43-40 in Vegas. Yeah, so hang around is yes, what we're telling stick you. stick around. Cavius Price back at that deep spot. Look at Price like a center fielder all that in. Price in open space. This is Cavius Price, still alive. What a return by Price. And that's exactly what you want to do, Michael. You have a big play take place against your team. You want to come back and do the same thing. Excellent starting position for Nick Holly and his offensive unit. And Price, as you said, climbs the ladder to pick that ball up. And then, this is what you want to do as a returner. You see open space, you don't run around it, you run to it. 
a great job of walking on the mm. sideline and keeping his balance and making more positive yards at the tail end of this play. Partner, I don't know if young Mr. Price has baseball in his background, but he looked like a center fielder that was going back to the wall to make that, yeah. uh, that grab, right? And he didn't miss a feet. He hauled that baby down and started his way on that 57-yard kickoff return. Great job, young man. Excellent job. So nice operating position now. Let's see after Anthony Filiaw certainly got everybody up at their feet here. Now Nick Holly back at the throttle of this Kent State offense. He wants to put it up. Holly gonna fire down uh, inside the numbers and did he hold it through the catch? Mike Kerrigan had it on his pads, but it was rocked and jarred away. He had to wait for it just a little bit. Holly, I'm sure, which is here notice Kerrigan earlier but you still have to make that play all right here Kerrigan goes up with it has possession but at the tail end right there ball that, pops out and you might want to well, Gerard that's that free safety mm -hmm. Ty Freeland we've yeah. talked about too that's folks that's a true freshman right there all right and that's what you call sticking to the tail end of the play and making something happen because had he not made that effort at the reception. Well, he's going to get big ups in the film room, isn't he, tomorrow? Certainly he will. Holly will fire the out. Making that grab was Johnny Woods. Did that football come out? That football came out, says the sideline of Howard. Howard football. They forced a fumble, and they've got it back. And that's what you call a momentum killer on the part of Woods. You have to hold on to the football. You're in a situation where you just had a great play. Hold on to the rock. And right here, yes, I appreciate the effort trying to get extra yards. But you have to hold on to the ball. Now the question is, did the ground cause the fumble? Throwing on the field. It's a completed catch. Fumble recovered by Howard. First down. Well, they may take a look at that. But making that initial hit was Antoine Murray. And as you see, he's starting to fumble the ball based on the hit delivered by Murray. So that's a fumble in my book. Antoine Murray came up off that corner and made the that play stick. Of a, a catch in a fumble is under further review. Now they're going to take a look at this. We, we take a look at it again. Right. Woods came down after Murray's stick. Woods came down and looked like the football was almost on his hip. Take, take us through it, Jay. Right. You can see at the tail end right here, as the, the blow has been delivered right there, you can see that the ball is starting to be jostled around, and it comes out at, just before that. So there was already fumbling taking place. And if you see the body language of Woods on the bench, you know that he fumbled that football. Yeah, I want to check that, too. That was Brian Cook. Cook is a uh, true freshman out of Mount Healthy High. All of you fans down around Cincinnati, they put a terrific lick on. And we'll see Gerard now. There has to be indisputable video evidence here. Right, and there is the possibility that his knee could be down as well, Michael. But right here, as you see, the ball is starting to come out already right there. But does it coincide perfectly with the knee coming down as well would be the next issue that the replay officials have to ask themselves. Gerard, I'm going to say that's going to stand yeah. as a football fumble put on the ground and a Howard Bison recovery. Yeah, but the knee could possibly be the saving grace of the golden flashes because that was a possibility in that call but it looked like to me that he was fumbling prior to mm. the ball hit or his knee hitting the ground yeah, take a look at Johnny Woods he's hoping that yeah, he's praying <laughs> he's hoping that knee was down and he's going to get the benefit of this uh, review and extra look at uh, how this play unfolded yeah nothing more frustrating as a player you finally get the ball thrown your way and when you get your opportunity yes you're fighting for extra yards but you obviously cannot afford to fumble that football let's listen to referee matt pakowski after review the on the field stands first down howard football came out and again again hey listen that that brian cook gerard as they looked at that that was about as text form from a corner coming up to put a hit on a receiver trying to turn up field as you can imagine. Exactly, putting the helmet on the football and that caused Woods to fumble it around, hence the turnover. Now Kalen Newton going back to work. Newton's gonna take a shot deep. 
And he overthrew his intended wide receiver. Newton was looking at uh, Anthony Filiaw, and in that coverage for Kent State was Demetrius Monday, the outstanding ball hawk for the Flashes. Yes, and Newton got away with one right there because, yes, you had Newton, you had Filiaw open, but great job on the part of Monday of going to the middle of the football field and making a play at the tail end of that. Yeah, free safety Quan Robinson also there. So Howard getting the big turnover down by just seven. Now out of the zone, Reed going to run the football with their uh, their fullback. Well, that's on that carry this time for Howard was Amir Lewis. So Lewis getting his first call now of the afternoon. Normally Devon Johnson or Desmond Wortham are uh, in that backfield, but now it is uh, the young fellow, Amir Lewis, a true freshman. Third and nine. Newton will step up, track down for the backside. That's a young man who's had a terrific football game, Nick Faulkner. Faulkner from that defensive end spot, another strong hit for him. Yeah, that's the second time today we've seen Faulkner have the ability to come across the field and make Third a play on the football. This is what happens when you give great effort. Great things occur. Faulkner had some help from Anthony McKay, but it, look, look at Faulkner. Getting yes, off a block too, exactly. Jay, right? But you appreciate that. will be highlighted in the defensive meeting room tomorrow. So with 45 seconds left in this first half, uh, the interim head coach, uh, Don Treadwell, uh, head coach Paul Haynes is here today, but Haynes took a leave of absence uh, before the uh, Clemson game. It, you know, it's expected to be two or three weeks, so we'll just have to keep monitoring that. Uh, when Paul Haynes, the fifth-year head coach here at Kent State, returns. But for now, he's got his football team, uh, Don Treadwell, the interim head coach, the offensive coordinator, quarterback's coach. They're up by seven, and they want a timeout to get their hands back on the football, Gerard. Exactly, and they have to be encouraged by what they've seen today because it's been night and day from experience day. Had experience last week, but obviously this is Clemson. They was Clemson. They're playing against Howard, but give the Bison credit too. This has been a very exciting football game. The dangerous Cavius Price from the 28. And I ran right into trouble there, though. Not sure that Price uh, Price knew that special team work was uh, coming from that backside. As this Devin Rollins, the special teamer, uh, in on that hit. Yeah, well, you appreciate the courage on the part of Price because you never know what's going to come from when you're feeling the punt. So now with uh, what we're we looking at here, 36 seconds left. Kent State, uh, do they have, what do they have? Two timeouts left, right? No, they just have one left. So let's see, do they want to try to get into field goal range here? And Holly's going to put it up. Well, he triggered that out, a late flag flew. But that football on the ground and free, it was coughed up and then picked up. By Howard's David Hudson. Now, I, I think that football is going to be ruled down, but, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see on that as Cavius Price made that catch and got drilled. The flag is laying Gerard at the 34-yard line, so let's see what Matt Pikowski, the uh, referee today, has here. Holding, offense, number 72, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. And that's one of the risks you run when you want to pass the tail end, especially when you're dealing with a quarterback that's not a prolific passer, so to speak. So do you want to be aggressive and have some positive things take place as you go into the half, but you cannot afford to have those type of things. Another fumble occur as well. Yeah, the hold will set Kent State back. And now Holly on that quarterback draw. Well, Nick Holly got tracked down for the backside. And in on uh, that, uh, that Howard stop. That's on the backside Time was uh, Elijah Howard. Anglin, the linebacker. The so timeout now with 16 seconds, seconds left seconds. on a uh, second and seconds. 20. Uh, that's going to be the final timeout of this, uh, this opening half. And both these teams 
as we prepare to go to halftime, have some positives that they can definitely build upon and say that we can have better control of this game if we do the little things correctly. The inopportune penalties for the Bison. Holding on to the football for the flashes. Well, week two, Gerard, and I know, you know, the old axiom is, well, you make your most improvements between week one and week two, but they came from such, yes. you know, different um, results last week with Howard traveling to Las Vegas and coming up with a big win and Kent State having to play the defending national champion on the road. Exactly, and in both cases, there's different emotions that are running through you. If you're Howard, how do you stay up after such an emotional victory last week? And for Kent State, how do you bounce back after being beat down? Uh, Holly's going to fire to the boundary. Oh, that was dangerous. As that throw was almost picked off by Ty Freeland as he was trying to find Raquan James. Now, with 11 seconds left, this is going to set up third down and long, third and 13 for Kent State. Yeah, you never want your signal quarter caller the quarterback to play scared but you also want him to play smart right there and in that situation where you have a safety over the top you have no business throwing that fade route let's we'll see if holly puts it up he ain't gonna put it up again a lot of time now nah, nick holly will pull the football down and he's in trouble and is going to get thrown down by devin rollins the uh, hard-hitting uh, middle linebacker and that will bring the first 30 minutes to an end howard a lot of big There's plays, a lot of excitement. Uh, also, a lot of mistakes that each coach is want to clean up. Now, Mike clock. London is two saying, seconds. wait a minute, that clock two should not have seconds. run out. And they are going to put an extra second, or the clock ran out, hit triple zeros. And right away, gentleman in the red shirt, uh, veteran head coach, Mike London, he said, wait a minute, you can't let that clock run down to triple zeros. Well, it sounds like to me the pump block is on or he really likes his returner because he's going to force Kent State to do that with punt, which is probably what they did not want to do in this situation. But this is what happens when you're ultra aggressive at the end of the half. Instead of taking that knee and let the clock run out, I understand you want to have some positive plays Thank you. before you go into the half, but this is the risk you run. Yeah, well, he's now, uh, Nick Holley's going to come back on the football field. Uh, you know, they're putting two seconds on the clock. So okay. it's going to be interesting now. Right, this is smart. Just simply, it, yeah, they're not going to put the football right. away. So if Holly runs around for a couple of seconds, exactly. which he will, there you go, and that's going to expire the first half. <laughs> and Holly will say, "I'm not going to take a hit and run out of bounds." So Mike London was hoping to get his football back, but for his offense, but he's happy. I tell you what, uh, his outstanding freshman quarterback, Kayla Newton, and his dynamic running back, Anthony Filiaw. Given Kent State's defense problems. Golden flashes, though. Gotten a couple of touchdown passes from quarterback Nick Holly. They got a 21-14 lead. We'll start our halftime roll for you. Back inside Dick Stadium, we welcome you to our Capital One halftime report. FCS, Howard Bison. FBS, Kent State Golden Flashes. Michael Regai, my partner. Gerard Cherry. We know this. Exciting plays in abundance in the first half, Jay. How does over 510 yards of total offense between the two squads sound? <laughs> it sounds great if you're a fan of big plays. Yeah. If you're a fan of defense, you may say what is going on out there, but very impressive on both sides of the ball in regards to the offenses of Kent State as well as the Bison of being able to have the big plays and giving us a lot of fireworks to discuss and talk about. Indubitably so. Both quarterbacks, they've been at the focal point of their two squads. you got a fifth-year senior for Kent State, Nick Holly, Always a threat to, to run the football. And what we're seeing, uh, just the second game of college football for career for Cam Newton's uh, younger brother, Kayla Newton, engineered that big upset last week of UNLV. Very impressive young quarterback. Yes, and Kalen's has some pressure on him today in that the Golden Flashes have been in the backfield hitting him every chance and opportunity that they get. But one of the things that you have to be encouraged about is the toughness that he's displayed in that. When he has taken a blow, guess what? He bounces back, gets up, and delivers his own as well. Very impressed with the young man's demeanor, and he shows you why he is the younger brother, Cam Newton, and that he possesses that toughness as well. Can't wait to see what kind of big play excitement is going to come up here in the second half. Got a feeling it's going to be uh, rather voluminous. That's why you should stay right here. Don't go away when we get back a lot more of our Capital One halftime report for you.
Kent State's got a 21-14 lead on uh, Howard. Coming right back. Welcome all of you back to our Capital One Halftime Report where Kent State has a 21-14 lead on Howard uh, here at Dick Stadium. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry. How about opening weekend last weekend in college football? It uh, had some that would excite everyone. A couple of top 25 matchups that were extremely entertaining and, of course, uh, capped off by... Uh, Alabama and their big win over the Seminoles of Florida State. What do you say we take a look at all of the, the wonderful sights and sounds that made week one of college football one to remember? USC has a blind snapper, and his name is Jake Olson. Olson has been blind since he was 12 years old. How about this for an inspirational moment? He is out there snapping. And a good snap from Jake. I want to say I'm a, I'm a Trojan and, and have, have a snap under my belt in the Coliseum. I mean, is there, is there anything more special? Oh, we know you are ready for it. One of the great opening games in the history of college football. Ridley is running free. He's got a touchdown. Tied. Look at this. How about a sack? Fumble. Score. Gets away from the defender. Looking downfield. Letting it fly. And it's pulled in for the touchdown. Saquon, say, gone. Lamar Jackson, this guy is impressive. This guy has held in for election. Mayfield floats it. Calcaterra, touchdown. If we all thought that we were going to come in here and sprinkle some fairy dust on this team, we're wrong. It's like college football is so special. You see stuff every game that you've never seen before. Liberty with a shocker in Waco. UNLV was a whopping 45 and a half point favorite. Howard pulling off the unthinkable. This kid is special. Over the middle. Oh, Touchdown, Bruins. Josh Rosen under pressure. Throws. Touchdown. Rosen back. That amazing comeback capped off by Josh Rosen in UCLA with their large cup for behind win over Texas A&M. Hope you enjoyed that, everybody. There's more of our Capital One halftime report coming your way. Catch State with a 21-14 lead over Howard here at the break. Larry, you got I'm so in love with you. Whatever you want to do is all right with me. Larry, you got to get those burgers off the grill. Doug Flutie? Who threw the Hail Larry? You mean a Hail Mary? Tomato potato, man. Those are two different words. Let's go, Dr. Pepper Hip. Let's go. Interesting. Great to have you back with our uh, Capital One Halftime Report here at Side Dick Stadium with Gerard Cherry. I'm Michael Regai, all of our ESPN crew. Kent State. Big plays abounding throughout this first half. Five touchdowns on the board 
hold a 21 to 14 lead. We mentioned 514 yards of total offense between the two. Both quarterbacks, true freshman Kalen Newton for Howard, fifth year senior Nick Holly for Kent State, have had dazzling moments. Gerard, let's take a look at uh, some of the pictures for the first half. And we'll start with uh, Nick Holly at Kent State getting on the board to first play from scrimmage. Exactly. First offensive play for the Golden Flash on offense. And what does Nick Holly do? He takes it to the house and shows you, yes, I am a converted running back to quarterback. I have the ability to tote and run that rock very well. But he doesn't stop there. He says, you know what, Justin? Here's a pass for you. I can also throw the football when asked to do that as well. Very impressive with how he's played in the first Holly. That first half that being Nick Holly. Yeah 14 nothing lead but that Kayla Newton said we got to respond. Now there's some questions on this particular play whether or not it was offensive pass interference but you know as well as I know Michael that they do not like to call that play so Kyle Anthony you get the congratulatory response of an excellent catch and throw on the part of your quarterback Kayla Newton. And then Nick Holly back for more right delivered that strike right on that 2-4 of Raekwon James. That's right Nick Holly showing once again I can match you throw for throw. But right here, the man, the myth, and soon to be a legend, Phil Yard. <laughs> he has been exciting. If you counter the idea that he had two holding penalties, this man would be well over 200 yards. But right there, he has the ability to show you once again that I can take it into the house on any place on that football field. I'm going to keep tabs on Anthony Phil Yard <laughs> all year, and I know you are as well. well a deluxe running back. 21-14, catch state on top of Howard. Gerard and I are coming uh, right back with more of our Capital One Halftime Report. Don't move. All right, almost set for this uh, second half to begin. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry uh, here inside Dick Stadium. Remember, Kent State won the toss to start this football game, Gerard, and deferred, so... Flashes with their seven-point lead are going to get their hands on the football to start the second half with a dangerous Cavius Price standing back at his five-yard line. Dakota Labofsky to approach, and we've got this second half underway. Trying to keep it away from Price, who ran up at the 21-yard line to accept. Flags flying. It's going to come back. Price has got the corner. And exciting everybody here. And Price probably traveled about 80 yards to pick up 20 on the return. But it's all going to be for naught as we're going to get a hold on Kent State. Exactly. And when you see where it took place, it was an excellent hit on the part of the Kent State return team. But sometimes it looks too egregious and the referee has to make a call. There are two fouls on the play. Both on the receiving team. Holding. 34. That penalty is declined. Holding. 26. 10 yard penalty. First down. All right, so a pair of holds on Kent State, and it's going back to flashes up as um, Nick Holly will get ready to go to start this second half. Holly, 98 yards rushing on 14 carries in that, uh, that first half. And Gerard also went 5 of 11 for 76 yards and threw for a pair of TDs. Yeah, Nick has truly been a dual-threat quarterback today. Coming to the game, you're assuming that it's going to be run, 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 but there's been run sprinkled with some very effective passes. Well, let's see who's in that backfield uh, with Nick Holly. It'll be Miles Washington to start this. And there you see that jet motion. It's Miles Washington and Raekwon James were maybe both moving. Timeout. Kent State. And Kent State As the burned the timeout prior to their first snap offensively here in the third quarter. And the way this game has been back and forth, you have to imagine that is going to be costly towards the tail end of this football game, burning that timeout with the first play scrimmage in the second half. All right, let's take a look at these numbers, Gerard. There's what we said. I, I think my mathematics are correct. That's 514 yards of total offense. Look at the, look at the yards per play for each squad. <laughs> exactly. That is the type of average you want. That means first downs are taking please, place. And if you please reset the were game able clock. to include the penalties, you'd probably be in the 600, 700-yard range for a total offense. And look Thank at that. You. 23 plays. Catch State ran. I love that from our 
Our tandem of uh, Tom Boschinick and Ed Warren down in the truck. 23 plays they ran inside Howard territory. Out of that zone read, and uh, look at Howard uh, coming up strong to stuff that carry of Kent State's Miles Washington. That is a, that's a huge hit from David Lee. Lee came up and put that stop. He put the stops to uh, Washington right now. <laughs> and David Lee is smiling because he knows he got the best of Miles Washington on that particular play right there. Great hit on the part of David Lee. Now, though, uh, for Howard, uh, Isaiah Flood, Flood, the junior defensive end, is uh, down and being attended to. It's one of those moments, too, where you're undersized lineman. You're going against a much bigger offensive line in Kent State that it starts to wear on you. Yeah, Flute only at 230 pounds at that defensive end spot for Mike London's squad. As you look at uh, Nick Holly in conversation. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, head coach Paul Haynes has not been able to be with his football team on the sidelines as he started uh, this is fifth season as the head coach. Uh, he's going to be out for a few weeks with uh, an uh, undisclosed reason, to be honest with you. And uh, now uh, the interim head coach is his offensive coordinator, Don Treadwell. Treadwell was a former head coach in Miami here in the Mid-American Conference. And Gerard, good to see Isaiah Flute on his feet, and we'll have to see if he can get back in the football game. Yes, certainly. I said, it's only a matter of time when you're 230 and they weigh 290-plus that it wears on you. Good point, partner. All right, now this is a, a second and ten for quarterback Nick Holly to start that zone read again. Got to be impressed with the way uh, Howard's front seven handling this. Miles Washington couldn't get started. Washington on the carry, give him just a couple. Going to be third down and third down and nine for Kent State. Yeah, we have no clue what Coach London said in the locker room at halftime, but right now, as you see, that defense is swarming to the football. I actually marked the football out over the 15-yard line. So, uh, rather, uh, it looked, uh, he, they gave Washington forward progress. So, let's call it third and a long seven here for Nick Holly. Holly to put it up. Nope, now he'll pull it down. Not going to get anywhere near that yard to make as, well, again, uh, that, that Howard front seven came a-calling and Holly... Didn't see anything to his liking. Fourth down, Kent State. There was nowhere to go with the football, so Holly made the wise decision pulling the football down and running with it. There was some time there, but again, the receivers were not open, so what do you do? You go ahead and run the ball. But credit again, that swarming defense by the Bison of being able to bring Holly down and elude him from picking up that first down. Now Derek Adams, the Ray Guy Award nominee, to boot it away. Didn't hit it like he wanted it. And took that sideways hop on him and is going to be downed in the neighborhood of the 46-yard line. Just a 39-yard punt for Derek Adams. TV time right, we'll take our first look at Kalen Newton and the Howard offense when we get back. 21-14, Kent State early third. What a beautiful afternoon here in the second weekend of college football in Northeast Ohio as uh, back at it. Kayla Newton uh, had something there, but uh, he threw that line drive and his throw was over the head of uh, Jaquez Ezard, who he hit with that big, big play, Gerard, in the first half. Yeah, and just that bit of overthrow to Ezard prevented what could have been potentially a big play because there was, once again, no one truly guarding the middle of the football field for Kent State. Well, Kayla Newton, the younger brother of Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton. This is Anthony Philyaw, and look out. Philyaw is free with a late flag being thrown after Philyaw. Gerard was 12 to 15 yards ahead of uh, Kyle Anthony. 
the wide receiver who we think is going to get flagged for blocking that far behind the play. And you appreciate the Offense. effort Number on the part of Anthony, but again, Phil Yaw has been denied a 200 plus, maybe 300 Second yard down. game due to overzealousness on the part of his blockers. See right here, Phil Yaw in open space, good luck trying to bring him down. And you appreciate the effort. But Jay, don't, right there. But at some you, point you got to let him go. You see Phil Yaw exactly. going by you, if you're right, let, let him go. Let him go. At some point you do have to do just that. You don't want to tell a guy not to be aggressive, but you have to be smart. And sure. right there, you were not smart. Well, that takes away another what would have been huge, huge gain on the ground from Phil Yaw. Now Newton with time. Going to check down and come underneath. Excellent defensive flow from Kent State after he hit uh, Jaquez Ezzard. See, Kent State really like James Alexander, that Mike linebacker that wears number five. And yeah, you like how James swarms to the football. He reads the crossing route, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do as a linebacker, and then track down and make a play on the football. It's going to bring up third down and 11. Well, right now, uh, Howard uh, lamenting that hold that Kyle Anthony had called on him on that big fill yard run. Uh, we got motion there. It's going to cost Howard five more and uh, make it third and Ball 16. Start. Offense, number 65. And this five has been an issue for Howard. And you're coming into a situation with Coach London where it's been a losing program. You're trying to make a culture change. And part of that change will have to live with guys recognizing and realizing that you have to play at a high level every down and on every play. And eventually, Coach London will be able to establish the type of program that he wants to have here at Howard. Absolutely. Now Newton going to take a shot. Going to unload the home run ball. And that is hauled in by Jaquez Ezzard. Do we have another flag around where the ball was snapped? Yes, you do. The offensive lineman of Howard just slumping their shoulders as if it might be on them for a hold. But now, though. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense. Number 98. Half position for the goal. First down. In addition to that big time throw and catch from Kaitlin Newton to Jaquez Ezzard, add on another one more. How about the ball placement here, Gerard? Excellent ball placement, but watch the key part here. Your job as a defender is to not allow the defensive middle of the football field to be uncovered. And you saw once again Howard's ability to exploit that because you don't have defenders in the right place at the right time for the golden flashes. Uh, back live here as uh, you see uh, again James Alexander tracking that down from the backside as he was able to take down Kaitlin Newton. As you watch here, as Kaitlyn hands the ball to Phil Yaw, and you know you're doing something when you're able to tackle Phil Yaw in the open field by yourself. All right, second and 11 now. I get the football to the fullback, and uh, banging through on that straight power play is Desmond Wortham. Wortham, who runs in uh, combination with uh, Anthony Phil Yaw in that backfield. Yeah, Wortham's a lucky man because I don't see how you keep Filio off the football field. You're right. Third and goal for the seven-yard line now. That jet sweep. Jaquez Ezzard got stood up and going to bring up first down, fourth down around the line of scrimmage. Excellent flow defensively. Big John Cunningham, the man in the middle, and, of course, that's tough defensive end, Nick Faulkner. And that's right there. You see Theo making an initial stop to slow down Ezra, and that's what you do. You make the play and rely on your teammates to come to the football to clean up the mess, and that's exactly what the Golden Flashes did. After that big play, Kent State's going to uh, get the, at least the, uh, the stop preventing the touchdown that they need as Dakota Lebowski, chip shot for him, right in front of the sticks, be a 24-yard field goal attempt. He's had one blocked, uh, as or Kent State had one blocked, as we know, and Lebowski will connect on that. Things tighten up a little bit here. Five minutes in to quarter number three. 21-17, Kent State's football when we get back. TV timeout. The Howard Bison, they shocked the college football world last week. And Mike London saying this week, well, maybe not so much of a shock. Let's see what my squad's got when we go up to Northeast Ohio against another from the FBS at Kent State. Uh, that Lebowski field goal has got him back to four, 21-17. 
Here is where inside the 10 minute mark in the third and Labosky will bang it away. Cavius Price will try to keep it away from Price. And uh, Raquan James on that kickoff return. Why, don't you love Cavius Price? <laughs> Cavius Price almost came over uh, near the numbers, Gerard, to take it away from James. We called him a center fielder in the first half. Cavius Price surely is. <laughs> he tried to call off James, but James was having no parts of it, Michael. But one of the good points I love that you brought up is the whole idea that when you beat an FBS opponent, after a while, they'll stop scheduling you if that becomes the routine. And if you're FCS opponent and you keep on defeating them. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, Gerard and I were here last year. We know a lot of you were in that five overtime FCS yes. football championship subdivision when we saw North Carolina Central A&T come in here. And on a night where we had weather delays and five overtimes, they came away with the win over Kent State. So now here Kent State again a year later welcomes in another from the FCS. This is a little different though. And North Carolina Central A&T, they've been a strong program. Howard's trying to rebuild under exactly. Mike London. Exactly. And with that rebuilding, you are seeing the here and there mistakes, ill-advised penalties and poor decision making. But to their credit, they're a much better football team because you and I had the honors of calling a couple years ago one of their games and they have definitely grown in their ability to play football as a program. What are you looking for and want to see on this Kent State drive here? Just establish something and stick to it. Now Holly's going to check that down and be able to hook up and connect with Justin Rankin. But again, we've called Ty Freeland's name a lot today. He's a true freshman free safety. Where's number 17? Gerard, he is around the football. Exactly, and this is what you want out of Ty Freeland. Making open field tackles just like that. That is pitcher perfect. Now start that speed option left, and Holly's in trouble. Did a nice job to get back to the 35-yard line, but Nick Holly, just straight speed option there. Never any intent of pitching, but that middle linebacker, Devin Rollins, said, no, you won't. Yes, and credit Howard for saying, you know, we can play with you guys, and we can swarm to the football, and we're going to make things happen. And if you can't stay, you do not want to be in a three-and-out situation and put your defense back on the football field with that high-powered Bison offense. Absolutely. Four wide receivers here, Justin Rankin, now offset. So four wide for Holly. Got to go up top. Go take a shot middle. Broken up beautifully. Attended for Raekwon James. But that defensive work out of the secondary from Brian Cook. There's Cook. We saw him force a fumble earlier in this uh, football game. <laughs> your coach, Lennon, you have to be encouraged what you're seeing from your secondary. An excellent play on the football by Cook of coming over the top and making a play at the last second because you did have the potential of making a big play on the part of Holly connecting with his receiver, James. Sideline warning. On Howard. There's no penalty assessed. Fourth down. So Mike London, oh, that, is that the face? Is that the is that the face of a football coach that's intense right there? <laughs> that is certainly the face of a football coach who knows and smells that hey, my football team has an opportunity and we need to take advantage of it. Absolutely, no question about that. So Kent State's got to boot it away. Guy Lamagne for, in that uh, solo spot, standing back at the 25-yard line for Howard. Now Derek Adams will hit a beauty. He hit a big one. Lamagne from the 10. Look at the punt cover squad of Kent State all over that. Absolutely terrific punt coverage as first one down there was Joey Palumbo, the long <laughs> the snapper. snapper. Love that, Gerard. And Lamagne does what you're told not to do, which is go backwards. You always want to be moving forward. Granted, the football took him that way, but you don't want to do what he just did right there. Now you have poor field position and you pinned against the wall. So let's see how the Bison handled this situation. Because that was excellent kick and coverage on the part of the Golden Flashes. They hit the big play, did uh, Howard on their last possession, as Kayla Newton was able to shake loose Jaquez Ezzard. And that led, of course, to the uh, Dakota Lebowski 24-yard field goal. Now, so here we go, third quarter, not quite mid-third yet. Gerard, this possession touchdown, Howard's got a chance to take the lead. 
for the first time today. Exactly. And we know that Howard possesses the ability to do a big play to do just that. to stay on the ground and that's that's a big fullback he'll pound his way for eight got that quick trap and the sprung Desmond Wortham Wortham got eight to bring up second down at short and they're going quickly yeah, and this tempo that the Bison are employing is having this effect on this golden flash defense second straight carry for Wortham he's got a first down as he crossed the 16 yard line so a couple carries 11 yards move the sticks Howard <laughs> Move the sticks, wear them down, wear them down, then you hit them with the big play. See right here, the push by the Bison offensive line. And they're undersized to a degree as well, facing this yep. big Kent State defense. This is Phil Yaw. Got a late flag as Phil Yaw got upended before he could get started by that hard-hitting Apache Jamal Parker, who wears number seven at Kent State. At this point, I'm convinced that every time Phil Yard touches the football, someone on this team wants to do something they should not do to lead to a penalty flag. It's seemed that way today, hasn't it? Personal foul. Offense. Legal block will the way. See, half and, the and that's, that's the big one, too. That's, that's half the distance First for the down. Right. You're asking your offense to overcome a lot when you do plays like that. And in the case of Phil, y'all, you don't need to give him that much. It's a weird thing to say, but you're giving too much effort. You're doing too much. Sometimes you simply just need to do your job with certain players. And with Phil, y'all, that's the case. You don't need to do extra blocking down the field. You don't need to be on the backside of the, of the football cut blocking someone. Would you think that at some point that would be Mike London message to the rest of the, uh, the offensive football? to say, guys, listen, you know, be smart. He's going to make plays for us. Don't right. put us in precarious position. Exactly, but you said the key thing earlier. You're dealing with a football program that's rebuilding. Yeah. Kalen Newton tried to keep a play alive with his legs and got an out of danger to throw that football out of bounds as Newton was being tracked. And what we mean by rebuilding is that this program has been in the dumps the dungeon for so long so guys are used to playing at a low level and not being accountable and playing at a higher level so you will see as time goes on that weed itself out yeah that right was here. yeah that was matt Barr there who is uh, the president of kent state student athlete advisory committee as now uh kayla newton and howard are going to go back to the ground game and that's one of the shortest journeys anthony filio has had today just got a couple it has to be a flag for it to be a big play. Yeah, no, you're right. Unfortunately, from the Howard perspective, we've seen way too much of that. Now, here's a big one now. It's going to set up third down at 14, and Howard's going to empty this out, Gerard, five wide for Kayla Newton. And Kayla right now is seeing that there's no one in the middle of football field. Does he go right there? Blitz coming, and Newton is set. Oh, that was Jip Jones coming off the edge. Jones, a 230-pound junior out of Tallahassee, he had a big season finale last year against Northern Illinois. 11 tackles for loss, two sacks and a forced fumble. Well, he had a free run on Newton, did he not? From the backside, defensive coordinator Ben Needham dialed it up. Perfect call for that situation. Newton had no clue that he was coming. That's one of the things you want to do against a freshman quarterback and that they haven't seen all of these different schemes from the blitz standpoint. Yeah, Damon Gillespie back near the back line of the end zone, and that snap is over his head, resulting in a safety. Gerard, I saw Gillespie kind of looking around, checking where he was, and just didn't have a real good feel, and, well, that snap never gave him a chance. Certainly did not, and right here you see it was far off to the right, and you do get nervous down there, I understand that, respect that. But you have to put your team in a position where you can make a play. And right there, that's just poor play on the part, Gillespie. So that bumps the Kent State lead now up to six at 23-17. And now, of course, after the safety, the Flashers are going to get their hands on the football again. And you assume with excellent field position. Yeah, free kicking from the 20-yard line here will be Howard. So let's see, what, uh, will it be the uh, and we Damon Gillespie, the punter here? And we noticed at the beginning of the game that there were some issues with the long snapping with the Bison, and it came back right there yeah. to hurt him in that case. 
Well, listen, um, normally most squads will will punt right. a, a free kick like this after safety, but Mike London is sending out his uh, his field goal kicker and kickoff man, Dakota Lebowski, here. So it'll be Lebowski with a football on the tee from the 20-yard line. He's going to be able to keep this away from Kavius Price. Yeah, he did. Raquan uh, James from the 30. James will dip to the outside. Nice return of 15 yards. That's one of those transcontinental jobs, <laughs> Gerard. Sideline to sideline. East Coast, right? West Coast. Well, West Coast, East Coast in that case. But you do want to make that... All North right. South. Yeah, you're right. We'll get into that as we get back. 23-17, Nick Holly and Kent State up by six with the football. Backing out the beat of a 23-17 lead. Uh, Kent State flashes with a football. Pretty good operating position. They've had two three and outs here in this half. Are going to run this reverse misdirection. Guess who? Cavius Price. Balls out. Balls out. Although the linesman, now a late flag. The linesman definitively came in and said that plays over that uh, Price had been down. But then a late flag flew too, Gerard, from the back judge. A lot of action on that particular play, but you have to protect the football. You're not in a position to give the ball right back to that high-powered Bison offense. Once again, no one on contain on the backside of reverse. You have to have that play at this point, being so late in the game, figured out if you are the Bison. Holding. Offense. Number five. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay. First down. Well, the wide receiver, Trey Harrell, got hit with that hole. See if we can pick it up, Jay. And from our vantage point, we don't see anything. You still got to protect that football. But it's interesting enough, they feel confident to run a reverse three times in a game. Normally, that's one and done. You are so right about that. Well, we have that discussion all the time, don't we? I mean, you, you start running the reverses and gadgets multiple times, and normally, they're not going to pay off for you. Boy, another, another explanation coming. The previous play is under further review. So now the question is, was it a fumble? Yep. Let's take a look, Gerard. All fumbles and change of possessions are reviewable. And that looks like a fumble to me. Now the question is, who recovered it? Well, you, you saw a big uh, Nathan put off. Right here. That's the center for Kent State. There's a ball's jarred loose there. And right there, before the knee touches the ground, the fumble does take place. So Howard may be in a forced position of recovering this football and getting it back and allowing that offense to get on the field and do what they can do, which is make big plays. Gerard, I, you know, we're pretty impressed with this secondary of uh, the Howard Bison. Now, that was linebacker, uh, backup linebacker Marcellos Allison on that hit. But they're ball hawks, Gerard. <laughs> they're, 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 they're playing the football a lot. Yes, they forced fumbles in. Creating situations when you get turnovers and just getting to the football. And when they get there, they are able to deliver a blow. And you've seen on several occasions where the hits have been so jarring that has resulted in fumbles on the part of Kent State. So, uh, you know, once again, and we've uh, we've had numerous looks today from the uh, the review booth up here near us. Mac Pakowski, white hat. Referee today, he and his crew, they have been busy, busy men, Gerard Cherry. Yes, they have. They got their work out today. The flags have been a-flying here in week two <laughs> of Howard and Kent State. And initially, in the beginning of the season, you do have situations where a lot of penalty flags are thrown because teams are still getting used to the idea of playing football at a high level. But at some point, you have to eliminate all that. And if you're Anthony Phil, y'all, when you go back and watch the film, you will be extremely upset 
to see how many opportunities were blown because of unnecessary holding on the part when you had a tremendous runs and efforts on his part. Normally, when a decision this long is forthcoming, you're, you're, you're thinking that they have enough indisputable right. vis video evidence that they can overturn a call. Now, remember, the call on the field was down on contact. Let's see if that stands. I think this might get overturned. I believe so, too. After review, the ruling on the field is a fumble with immediate recovery by Howard. The first and 10 for Howard at the 40-yard line. Overturned, just as we thought. Cavius Price had that football a jarred away from him and ultimately lost. Marcellos Allison made that hit. There's Allison, and it, Kent State has turned it over uh, yet again. So Brian Cook first of Howard, and now Marcellos Anderson has forced fumbles on Kent State receivers and ball carriers. Right, and the receiver for Kent State have to do a much better job of securing that football, but the give credit to the Bison for again delivering yeah, those jarring down. hits. So wherever the weight room coach is in D.C., you are doing your job because those guys are playing with some serious power. I like the way you put that, sure. There's a force about the way they play. <laughs> yes, they hit you. They're not looking to just, you know, arm tackle you. <laughs> no, they They're are. not only looking to drive through you. There's a, we're going to jar the ball loose, too. And they put that on display today. So back to Kayla Newton. Newton will gun the out. And that is hauled in. And making that grab for Howard was Kyle Anthony, who caught the touchdown. That's 13 and a first down for Howard Bison. Yeah, back to that fast-paced offense again. Nothing but a simple curl. Out. Anthony makes a catch. Back to the ground game. This is Anthony Fillyaw. Second level and a whole lot more. And finally tracked down at the 28-9 yard line of Kent State. Making that stop for Kent State was Matt Barr. 18 more for Fillyaw. And the way Fillyaw runs the, the runs the ball, you said to yourself, how is he not on an FBS squad? How what what was the backstory to this? Because this young man is running very effectively today. Now Kayla Newton could not shake loose there as Newton was taken down. Nice tackle from Matthew Summers, 265 pound senior, wears number 33 for Kent State. And it makes you wonder, Michael, why don't you just feed Phil Yaw over and over again? Because outside of the penalty plays, he's been unstoppable today. 150 yards for Phil Yaw on 12 carries. Toss the sweep to Phil Yaw. That's an outstanding defensive play, though, once again by Matt Barr. Barr came up and made the stop. Barr also uh, had some help. A lot of flow to the football there. Exactly. And if you're going to tackle Phil, y'all, you better bring a committee. Because the run that he makes is with a lot of effort. But that's what you do. You secure him, then you bring him down. The arm tackle will not get the job done. Mandela Lawrence Burke, young sophomore, playing a lot of football in the secondary for Kent State. This is third and nine. Another flag flies. Probably should be out. Looks like motion. Illegal movement on, uh, on Howard. They have had so many, not only big plays, but just opportunities to snap the football negated by flags. Right, and that will leave you up again late at night. Send yourself, guys, what can we do? We are hurting ourselves in this situation. Referee Matt Pakowski again and his crew, they're going to get it sorted out here. Offside, defense, number 17, five-yard penalty, third down. Initially thought it was going to be a false start motion, but after consultation with his uh, fellow officials, the ruling is offside on Kent State. The coach London would greatly appreciate that. Big difference instead of third and 14, it's third and nine. Now let's check that. Instead of third and nine, it's third and four. Stay with the ground game on that zone read. That's not going to get there. They went with uh, the 200-pound uh, fullback, Des Wortham, and Wortham got shut down at the 22-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down and a long two. We're inside four minutes left in the third quarter with Howard. Now, decision time for Mike London, Gerard. He's down by six. Down by touchdown. 
No field goal unit on here. Man, it's an easy decision for me. Heck, it's an easy diagnosis of the play. Give it the field, y'all. Newton stays alive. Kalen Newton's got a first down as he powered his way to the 16-yard line. Newton looked like he was going to be stopped on that fourth and two, but he wiggled free. And this is what you call a will to win, because right there you should be stopped. But Kalen says, no, I refuse to not pick up this first down. With that great effort at the tail end right there, it does just enough to pick up the first down. He eluded the hard-charging Matt Barr. Red zone time for Newton. Newton's going to throw the fade. Corner of the end zone. Demetrius Monday had excellent position there on Kyle Anthony to bring it up. Yeah, Monday said, fool me once, or actually pull me down once. You won't do it twice. It has excellent position on that particular play. And fortunate enough that he wasn't able to pick that off. Play the ball just a little bit better. You might have opportunity to make that interception. He was on the inside shoulder there, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and floated to the outside. Yeah. Well, brings up second and ten. From the Kent State 16. This is Phil Yaw with a shake inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Boy, the Apache Jamal Parker thought he had Phil Yaw dead to rights. Uh, but this uh, superb running back shook free. And yeah, that's the exact way to su describe it superb. Beats you to the outside and then gives you a piece of his mind once he gets to the point of impact. Jamal Parker, Jim Jones, a 230-pound junior linebacker. Solid job today for Kent State. On third and four, Wortham inside the five to the pylon. Touchdown, Howard. Des Wortham. And Wortham shows you that he has the ability to attack the boundary as well. And great blocking as you see the guards pulling for the Bison. Giving him that convoy you talk about, Michael, and allows Wortham to reach pay dirt. So Desmond Wortham. Now, did he step out of bounds? Is he on the white? He's on the yep. white. And that football did not get. This is going to get reviewed and brought, the previous uh, play brought back the to the two. Is under further review. Great catch by our uh, our stellar camera crew there. Great job, guys. Watch Wortham step out of bounds on the white boundary, Gerard. Yeah, so you watch the tail end of this play right there. It's clear Wortham's out of bounds. Excellent camera work. Way to go, guys. Our producer, Jeff Bentley, director, Mike Simons, all of the crew all over it today. Gave you a real good look. And, you know, again, the referee uh, that fields that single touchdown. Yeah. He had Wortham uh, stepping inside that pylon, but he did step out of bounds. And you always face that issue when you run into the boundary. But one thing that I do like about that particular play is the blocking of Anthony at the end. As you see, you have guards pulling, guys doing their job, no one outside to contain. And then watch right here, you have your receiver putting on a block as well. Mm. Well, you see how va that shows you how valuable receivers that block it well are. Kyle Anthony, 81. I mean, he, had, he had an outstanding quarterback. He had Jarrell Foster. Locked up, mm -hmm. engaged, and was driving, driving him back to the end zone. I mean, you know, you get that kind of blocking from your wide. Now, also, though Anthony made a, an egregious <laughs> error where Phil Yall would have had a 40-yard run that he had taken because he held behind the play. And that's the that issue of you don't want to temper a guy's aggressiveness. The runner stepped out at the one-yard line. Ball is placed at the one-yard line. With that, first and goal. You appreciate it, but sometimes you have to be clock, smart and recognize the situation. Because, yes, you want to be tough Thank and you. drive guys down, but typically the officials are going to call a holding on that when you do that, especially once the ball passes you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you know, that's all. That, he'll get that pointed out to him in film study, right? Certainly. I mean, and, and, you know, it's then it's about young men, you know, understanding. Yeah, figuring out situational right? football. Figure it out. There you go. All right, this young man is a dynamic freshman quarterback, is he not? Great look at Kayla Newton. Newton will keep the football. He got stood up. I don't think he got to that, that end zone. He did not. Well, that's a big combination hit. Big John Cunningham, 300-pounder, <laughs> who squats over 700 pounds. Yeah, former wrestler as well, so you know he can bring the boom.
Uh, Howard went up to the line of scrimmage and snapped the football very, very quickly. We're going to see if everybody was set. Now, there's your signal. Touchdown from referee Matt Pikowski. They, they ran to the line of scrimmage and snapped it right away. <laughs> One of the benefits of a quick snap offense and also in that situation, low man always wins. As Newton dies over the top to get the touchdown, sacrificing body and love his effort and his energy today. The young man has a bright future ahead of him. Kalen Newton had a touchdown running. Two touchdowns running and one through the air last week. Got his first rushing touchdown here today. And late third quarter with that PAT, that straight and true, the Howard Bison have taken their first lead of the afternoon. A 24-23 advantage on this Kalen Newton quarterback keeper. And no doubt about it, Michael, this Howard team will stick around. Yes, they've had a bevy of mistakes, but to their credit, they have stuck around. And if you can't stay, you're going to have to find a way to get some positive production on the, this series because this may have the game in balance if you give that ball right back to Caden Newton and his squad because you know what they want to do once they have it in their hands. They want to march on the football field. So it's imperative for Nick Holly to sustain a drive with this offense for Kent State. Mike London won an FCS National Championship at his alma mater, Richmond, with the Spiders. And then, of course, you know, you know he's been in Virginia. And uh, look, right now, look, Gerard, I know it's only uh, one game and three quarters through the second. But Mike Howard looks like he's had this Howard, this uh, Mike London, this Howard program that has not won much at all in the last three years, really believing in this ability to turn this program around right away. Certainly, as you saw on the graphic right there, you already have 180 was the average last year, and you're at 211 already, so it shows that progress has been made, and the future is bright. The question is, how long will Coach London stay around if he does turn this program around? Yeah, and uh, that Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the MEAC that they play in, and 11 squads in it, Gerard, they were picked ninth in the preseason. Mike London, he, uh, you know, was a couple years ago with, with the DJ Durkin for a year at Maryland last year. And now comes into D.C. Stuns college football last week by beating UNLV and now has a lead late third year. That football is fumbled by Cavius Price. He is in a whole host of trouble here. But look at Price still alive. Cavius Price. How do you do it, young fella? <laughs> to the 43-yard line. Did I not say he's in a whole host of trouble? He's in more than a host of trouble. He's in possibility of losing his scholarship after that particular initial mess up and snafu. And you never want to run backwards on any type of a football play. But right here, Price shows you why he was not it as a kid growing up. Excellent job of running the ball. But initially, there were some bad decisions being made there. But to his credit, he showed his athletic ability to make a huge play. <laughs> Getting Kent State out of danger, Cavius Price, Nick Holly, and a target, Justin Rankin, who made the grab. Rankin's got a first down, or real close to it, depending on the spot. As Holly with uh, that quick throw to rank and to get the football in the running back's hands. Yes, and get a rhythm established because a lot of times you simply want to do that. Allow Holly to get established and comfortable again, passing the football, and then let him do a couple runs as well. Second and real short, Nick Holly's going to keep the football and uh, follow that snap and block of that, uh, that center, Nathan Putoff, the senior out of Columbus. That'll move the sticks here late third quarter. First down, Kent State. Did you ever, at, at Cal, you were such a dynamic. Did you ever return punts and kickoffs at Cal? I did Cal? kickoffs. Did you? Yes. So you know what Cavius Price <laughs> is thinking about down there. Trust me. When the you're special, starting to yes. try to change direction to reverse yes, your field. Special teams yeah. coach is like, you will never play another <laughs> down again. Wait a minute. Okay. We'll start you next well, week. <laughs> you said it right. Scholarships could be taken away for things like that. Now, that, that quick hitter. Off that uh, that zone read principle, and that is uh, running back, the true freshman, because Sean Gamble, who played both sides of the football, running back and, and linebacker last week at Clemson. The excellent size and ability just to be the hammer for this Kent State offense. Now 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Holly's going to take a shot. Fiery deep and laying out 
but not able to hold that in was Johnny Woods. Johnny Woods came within the very, the very last length, the tip of the football of making a sensational grab, and he's shaken up. Yeah, it looks like it's his wrist as he fell awkwardly at the tail end trying to secure that football, but an excellent effort on the part of Woods, as you see right here. Nick again showing that, hey, I can throw the football. As Johnny goes up, he tries to adjust for it, and he has to make a circus catch, and then right there at the tail end, as you see, lands awkwardly on that wrist. See it again from this vantage point. Nice grab, but again, it hits the football, hits the ground. So Johnny nice Woods is up. Yeah, very nice effort. The senior out of the state of Alabama, Johnny Woods, who has had some uh, some solid moments here as a wideout at Kent State. And, uh, you know, Gerard, yeah, the, yeah, maybe the shoulder a little bit too. We'll, we'll wait and see on it. And, and I appreciate the aggressiveness on the part of Golden Flashes on offense. But I just get a sense and feel that you want to work the clock and utilize that gigantic offensive line that you have from a size differential standpoint and just pound away against the Bison and keep Newton and company off the football field. Yeah, that O-line of Kent State's averages a little bit over 300 pounds with that fivesome up front. Nathan put off uh, that center and his group of veteran buddies up there. Pressure coming. Holly off play action. Fired a rope. And that is hauled in by Trey Harrell, 28-yard line. Big one, 15 yards, first down, Kent State. An excellent play design on the part of the Golden Flashes. When you have those type of crossing routes and you recognize that the defense is in man-on-man -man coverage, it creates so much confusion with guys crossing in front of each other. It creates that open space for Holly to deliver that pass. Justin Rankin back in the football game right now. They're using the big 6-6 tight end, Shalfonte Butler in this personnel package as well so Johnny Woods for the time being not on the football field a couple of tight ends here for Holly Holly fires that in cut and that's hauled in by Rankin you know Gerard they've done a nice job hit him on a touchdown pass they've used him where he's offset not even in a slot but in the backfield to do damage with him in the pass game right and that is the beautiful situation that is the end of the third works. quarter and that it gets you the situation where just read and figure out the open space and I'll hit you there. So that's a good combination work between Rankin and Holly right now. 45 minutes in the books, partner. You ready for the decisive final 15? Something tells me it is going to be extremely exciting. Mike London clapping up uh, the, the confidence for uh, Howard Bison. They've got a 24-23 lead on Kent State. Fourth quarter next. Don't go away. Red zone time for Nick Holly at Kent State for the 17-yard line. A run that quick hitter as uh, Holly found Will Matthews operating behind. Nathan put off the center and Nate Warnock, that right guard, and uh, banging down uh, to the 10-yard to the line. <laughs> Watch how Will hits this hole, but he's protecting the football, which is very heads up on his part. But he was close to doing much more with that potential play. Nice tackle on the part, the Bison. 5'7", 205-pound Will Matthews out of the pistol now behind Holly. Again, zone read, and this time a put down is Will Matthews. He was trying to read a block. It looked like uh, his right guard, Nate Warnock, but there's that active Mike linebacker again. Well, we have called Devin Rollins all day today. Yeah, and Will's asking for another opportunity because he can sense and feel it. And he's close to breaking one. But give him credit for adjusting because previously, earlier in the game rather, he was bouncing out and now he's hitting straight ahead. It's exactly what you want to do. Mike Kerrigan, Chris White, Trey Harrell. Gonna go with four wide now. Holly will keep the football. And he could not beat Devin Rollins. Yet one more solo tackle for Devin Rollins, a 240 pound fifth year senior going to bring up uh, though he got inside that line to make to pick up the first down Holly thought he had the end zone Rollins got him but not before the first down carry by by uh, Holly and Rollins is making a great case for being MEAC player of the week on the defensive side of the ball yeah they had a lot of that last week Gerard in uh, quarterback Kayla Newton and on the defensive side Richard Johnson 
First and goal from the six yard line for the Kent State lead. Holly will keep the football. Nick Holly still alive. Bounced off a hit. And finally put down uh, at the one yard line. That's a gain of five for Holly. Second and goal from the one. And never forget, converted running back with the ability to play quarterback is why you get that type of tough yard effort. An excellent read by Holly as well. And then the ability to run through a defender and to pick up more yards. Zone read. Everybody about that mesh point is so vital. <laughs> yes, quarterback decision making, right? Yes, and you have to be decisive when you make it. Now Holly will give the football. Touchdown, Kent State. That ball carrier was the freshman, Kashawn Gamble, the 250-pounder, banging into the end zone to put Kent State back on top. <laughs> Reminds you of Durham back in the day. They always seem to find that Travion big 250. Durham. There you go. Yeah, you remember back to that, that season, of course, under Daryl Hazel when Kent State was so very close to going to a New Year's yes. Day bowl game and that MAC championship game at, against Northern Illinois at Ford Field in Detroit. They've got the lead here, and now interim head coach uh, Don Treadwell says, let's go for two. Holly gave the football to Raekwon James, and but they, they threw a flag down. And not a flag. They actually just stopped it and got a Kent State timeout. Started the snap. We have a timeout. Kent State. That's their first and a half. Big groan comes out from this crowd because after the, the touchdown uh, from the true freshman, Kashawn Gamble, Raekwon James had that hole into the end zone for the touchdown. Right. Correction. Correction. That is their second time of the half. And James, for being an undersized player, great job of running between the tackles and pushing through there. And you understand the coaches have some decisive indecisiveness and you want to be sure about what you're doing, but you want that timeout back, especially with how close this game is and you end up scoring on the play. Yeah. Five running backs uh, today, Gerard, have uh, toted the football for Kent State. And that's not counting the converted running back quarterback, <laughs> Nick Holly. Six, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, nothing wrong with running back by committee when it's effective. Right, and they got it going on here at Kent State. Well, let's see how they're going to line up here. They had a two-point conversion uh, a moment ago. Right now, it's Miles Washington in the pistol. Washington, the running back in the pistol behind Holly. Trying to convert for two. Holly keeping a football. Nick Holly battles. He got there. Two point conversion. Nick Holly at Kent State. Did we just discuss his characteristics as a former running back? Keyword converted running back who plays quarterback and you love the energy and you love the effort on the part of Holly because this is simply energy and effort because he should have been tackled in the backfield but he refuses to go down shows that I can get the job done with my legs once again and right there just a will to get to the end zone to help his team establish a seven point lead. Gerard he took that first contact at the two yard line. Yes he did. That's a call I will not be denied. I will not be denied. Excellent effort on the part of Holly. Two-point conversion successful, and that gets this on seven again. By that I mean the lead is seven. Kent State, and you know, anytime a team's up five, and like, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, what are you doing? We're not kicking an extra point. Right. Well, you're up five. Every head coach's or offensive coordinator's book in America is going to tell you that. If you're up five, you go for two. The analytics, the statistics bear it out as well, and with the way. Howard's been playing on offense. This is going to be a matter of time before they score. Yeah, it's 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 had the feel of this type of a big play explosive game. Uh, we're still 1235 left in this one, folks, so do not go anywhere. Uh, hey, listen, I'll just say I wouldn't be surprised three, four more touchdowns, touchdowns. before this one's over. <laughs> so Shane Hines has got it on the team. Jaquez Ezzard and Jordan Scott back to return for Howard. Look out. It's Ezzard from the 15 as he and Scott 
came together a little bit indecisive. But nice job by uh, the uh, the kicker though, Gerard Shane Hines. He booted that football right in the middle of the two of them with a lot of loft on it. Kick cover team for Kent State right there. Exactly. You love those hang time kicks as a coverage team because it gives you the opportunity to make that big hit and get that coveted, in this case, just inside the 20, but you're always looking for that tackle inside the 20. I ask you about your punt returning and kick returning at Cal. I know you did in the NFL. Did you play as, an, as a young player, freshman, so did you play a lot of kick cover teams? As well. Cal? Yes, I did as Both well. Both kick return and punt return? Yes. That's fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's your opportunity <laughs> to get on the football field. And one it of the ways you, which you get noticed you, you, is by making plays there on you that go. unit. There you go. Preach that to young football players all the time is that first down call goes to Des Wortham. You get no – yeah, I know sometimes you got to subjugate your ego. You're, you're a big-time player in high school. You're a star. But you know what? There's probably 95 other ones in that college football room you go into. Exactly. You've got to play special teams, young man. Because right, at the end of the day, it's not about you. What can you do to make a play and help your team? Sure. Now Newton's going to fire deep. He wanted to find uh, his wide. Do we have a flag on that? There is a flag on that. He was looking for Kyle Anthony, his big six foot four receiver, and there was contact. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Kyle Anthony has a he has a future as a lawyer because he pleaded his case Pass and got a job defense, done. Defense, defense number seven, fifteen yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic well, first down. That's not a big one now. And if a holding is called on a pass attempt, that's five yards. Right. For, that's the big one. That's the big one. That's 15 yards pass interference, the P.I. Right. And the, fl the flag was late. However, again, give Anthony credit for selling it because official bought it. Kayla Newton. Newton going to take another shot in the seam. And that throw got off the hands and incomplete as he was looking for. His tight end, I think Justin Dooley, had that football. And once again, you see too many defenders on Kent State getting nosy in the backfield and not sticking with their men. And that's why you see Wortham running down the football field free. Yeah, Des Wortham snuck out of the backfield there, so he's going to get a... Uh, a quick respite on the bench here. Pass interference. Offense. Number 12. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat. First down. Now that's one of the rarities that you don't see when it wasn't even the player on the play. So you just had a situation where you gave up 15. Now you got it right back for the golden flashes on defense. Jaquez Ezard, who has done a uh, an outstanding He's job. A good game. Well, yeah, he stepped in with Jason Collins injured and out today for Howard. So that backs it up once again now. And the football on a 20-yard line on first to 25. And on that carry. Like Devon Johnson and making that hit for Kent State. As Jim Jones, there's Jones, and he's going to hobble a little bit. Jones made the stop. Jones, James Alexander, and the Apache, Jamal Parker. Real solid linebacking unit for Kent State. Now Newton again, looking deep. Going to air it out. Another flag. Mm. Uh, if it's defensive, that's on Jamal Parker in coverage. Kyle Anthony, the intended receiver. And I think they're going to flag Jamal Parker, the Apache, for the second time in this possession. Pass interference. Defense, number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that is a momentum killer, to say the least. I understand it's a tough cover, but you cannot hold the receiver. If you can't get the job done, tell your coaches. Simply that. And at some point, you do need to start double covering. Anthony because it appears that he can't be covered one on one that is you know and again uh, Parker was a converted uh, DB uh, Newton will keep the football he's not going anywhere that football came out now did Newton get it back there is a big big scrum at the 33 yard line Kent State is saying they've got the football Newton was trying to spin out of a hit and lost it he got his hands back on it again but at the bottom of that pile for Kent State 
coming up with a play is Theo Eboisbe. <laughs> Theo's a Johnny on the spot. It'll be interesting to see if there's a review because it appeared to me that he may have been down, Michael. As you see right here, tries to spin out, and you appreciate the extra effort. And that's where the fumble comes into play, but does he recover it on the ground and then basically has the ball taken away from him? Yeah, Sean Faulkner was uh, twisting and turning. There's Faulkner who's had a terrific game today. And at that point, his head's on the ground, is not it, his knee. Well, it's going to be reviewable. It's coming up here. I mean, every turnover is. Sure, it's got to be reviewed. I mean, every time a turnover change of possession, it comes upstairs. It. you right. got to review it. You appreciate the, the effort. previous play of a fumble and recovery by the Kent State is under further review. And right here, the question will be, is the head the same as a knee? Because if no knee touches the ground, it's the helmet. No, I think what Faulkner was dragging him down, Gerard uh, Newton was landed on, on Faulkner. Yeah, but his head was also on the ground as well. Right. So he's... And if the question is he's in process of fumbling ball while doing that as well. So there are a bunch of things you have to look at on this particular play. I haven't been counting or keeping a uh, tote sheet, but I think I'll say for the fifth time today, at least five, there has to be indisputable video evidence uh, through the review booth for it to be overturned. Now, the call on the field is fumble, fumble. Kent State recovery, turnover, Howard, Kent State football. Will it stand? I get the sense and feel it will not stand. Really? All right. No. Gerard is saying that he doesn't think it's going to stand. Our producer, Jeff Bentley, says the same. The ruling of a fumble and immediate recovery stands. First down, Kent State. There you have it. Well, the Kent State folks, partner, you are usually uh, close to 100%. They're happy that you weren't <laughs> correct this time. I'll just put it that way. Uh, Mike London may have different ideas yeah. but again you know it go when it goes to review it's got to be one million percent indisputable didn't see enough evidence there Nate Holly back on the football field with his team up by seven gonna go to the ground game and uh, pound that zone read power play and running miles Washington the 222 pounders <laughs> that's what you want to do right now keep the bison off the football field use that big offensive line use your power backs Take time off this clock, because right now that could be your friend if you can get more time off of it and not allow the football back to that high-powered Bison offense. Yeah, Nick Holly, as we said, there have been five running backs plus Holly, so six ball carriers today for Kent State. Right now the call is to go with a power guy, 225-pound Miles Washington in the pistol. Washington again, more zone read. Got knocked out at the 29-yard line. It's going to bring up third and, and five. Right, and you don't have to be fancy with it. Obviously, you put yourself in a situation for Hollywood. It's a manageable pickup where you put him in a rollout. He can either run it or, if there's an open receiver, make the pass. I would definitely employ more of a rollout offense in this particular situation with Holly at the helm at quarterback. Kent State by seven. They just forced a big turnover, and now... They're looking at a third down and five. Kent State with 218 yards on the ground today. And now, is it Mike London that wants a Howard timeout? Yes, it is. And that was a wise call timeout, on part. Timeout, Howard. A coach London. The first of the half. First of the half. Yeah, All right. Yeah, with Mike, uh, Mike London saying he wants to talk to his defense, third and five down by seven. Let's take this timeout. Uh, Kent State with his third down snap. Be a TV timeout. By seven when we get back. Back inside Dick Stadium, Kent State, trying to add to a 31-24 lead. Nick Holly has been terrific today, Gerard. Yes, he has. First play of offensive possession goes to the house, and then he shows that he can also throw. He's not one-dimensional. He's a dual-threat quarterback. He's truly established that on today. And then the effort and energy that he applies just getting to where he needs to get to help his team get the necessary yards and points take the lead in this football game. Michael Rega, Gerard Cherry, Holly's facing a third and five to keep the drive alive right here. Going to keep the football. Holly, outside the numbers, he's got a first down as he extends the football at the 24-yard line. He needed every bit of that real estate, Gerard, but extending the football before going out of bounds. Exactly, and extending the drive, because what you appreciate it, the speed. 
Yes, I possess PD. I'm not your run-of-the-mill quarterback. I am a converted running back, and you see right there the Jets were put on, and he was able to pick up that first down. We come near the nine-minute mark now. Back to the ground game. Good cut. Late flag going to take away this Will Matthews run. Matthews battled his way down inside the 10. That's uh, uh, about a 14-yard run from Matthews where he broke four Holding. tackles. Going to be Offense. negated. Offense. Number 74. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. They got Nate Warnock, the transfer out of uh, St. Joe's College in Indiana. Yeah, Nate's not too happy with himself because he realizes I got to do a better job, and that's the second time today we've called your name, and that's never a good <laughs> situation by any stretch of imagination but I like the way Will is running the football Michael he's being very decisive and hitting that hole and you see right here penalties it's been the one of the major stories of the game <laughs> Howard with 10 for 114 and Kent 20 State flags. 10 for 87 that is a lot of activity on the part of the officials 20 flags thrown in this football game oh baby all right still 852 left Gonna go back to that uh, that ground game again and run the big fella, Miles Washington. Washington got a couple. <laughs> he is the big fella. <laughs> so they're going with it. In the last couple of drives we've seen, uh, they've gone with a bigger back in Washington. Now Justin Rankin. Now Rankin has come back at a football field here. And it looks like that Rankin and Washington will run in tandem here on this snap. Right, and Rankin is definitely being utilized in the passing game. Yeah, Rankin in the pistol with Washington offset. Rankin will explode inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line. That's 10 yards on that quick hitter off the zone read look. Yeah, you're getting 10 yards of pop, you stay with that type of look. Rankin shows you that, yes, I can catch up the backfield, but I can also run with power through the tackles as Rankin goes straight up the middle and credit offensive line for providing the initial hole, but Rankin with the ability to get to that second level with his effort. Well, Rankin got 10 after Kent State was backed up on the hold on Nate Warnock. Flashes trying to add to their seven point lead here and go up uh, double digits late fourth. Stay on the ground. Bursty through a big hole. Will Matthews inside the 10. That's another first down. Boy, this they're, they're variants of running backs, different sizes. This time Matthews with the quicks. <laughs> Look at Will hit that hole, and Will's been a, several shoestring tackles away from potentially scoring. And that's a beautiful feeling as a runner when you can sense and feel that the defense is wearing down and you're starting to have your way as an offensive line and just getting that push and giving the running backs the space that they need to get those positive yards. Rankin got 10, play before, now 10 more for Will Matthews. 250 yards on the ground today. Holly looking for more. Holly will cut back inside the five and got taken for a ride at the three yard line. And Nate Holly picking up tacklers. How about that? <laughs> no, you Jerry? Say to yourself, you, you know you got energy when you're picking up the guy who just tackled you or you carry for about three or four yards. But you're saying to yourself, if you're the Bison, okay, we just got through getting hammered by two guys, and then the quarterback runs, and there's just as much power involved with that as well. Leland Lassiter, the, uh, the strong safety, came up and uh, put the stop on Holly, and then Holly just pick, picked him up off the ground. I don't know, maybe he said good hit to him. I'm yeah. coming back for more. Now that kind of messes you up. Hey, man, I just popped you, and you are going to help me up? <laughs> uh, guess it didn't hurt too bad. We come inside six minutes left. And a second down carry into the end zone. Touchdown, Kent State's freshman, Kashawn Gamble. You got to figure if you had issues bringing down guys weighing 205, you stand no chance with a guy weighing in at 250 pounds. Good blocks yes, on yes, the left side, certainly. wasn't it? Yes, it was. Great job opening up the hole. And give credit to Millen and James as well as Gregory. Put off the center. Did a real nice job. Last couple of touchdowns for Kashawn Gamble, the true freshman. Shane Hines, perfect, adds the PAT. 
it stretches the Kent State lead up to 14. Pair of touchdowns for Kashawn Gamble, lowering the boom for Kent State. Back to Dick Stadium in a moment. A couple of fourth quarter touchdowns have been big. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, Kent State extends the lead to 14. Gerard, ball control, possession, taking time off the clock and putting 14 points on the board. Big for Kent State. <laughs> exactly, Michael. Smart strategies you're being employed by the Golden Flashes in that you want to keep that big play offense of the Bison off the football field by utilizing the power running game that you possess. All right, that kickoff is going to come down near the goal line and on that return, what a wallop too. On that Howard return, first return today for Amir Lewis, and he got depleted. Was that Nick Faulkner? It was. Yes, it was. The defensive end on special teams. Well, he put a shot on Lewis. You got to understand, Nick Faulkner weighs 243 pounds, is running down the football field at full speed, you're going to have a heck of a collision if he's able to get a clean shot on you. You and I have been there, and, and that's what we've talked about here a few times today. I mean, man, when you got that free, you got a 60-yard full burst to go hit somebody. Yes. And legally. Legally. <laughs> and this legally. is a starting defensive end for your defense, which is a sign of a good football player in that he's willing to be on special teams to run down there and make a play. And he yeah. made one heck of a play. Now, we hope the young man is all right for the Bison, because he, again, Amir Lewis, Amir Lewis yeah. took a extremely hard shot. As you see right here coming to the tail end, that's full mm. impact right there, ladies and gentlemen. It even hurt Faulkner, so that's how you know it was a serious hit. People have asked me and unfortunately have said, you know, sometimes, you, well, what's it like? Well, it, it's like being in a car crash. Yeah, it certainly is. Right? Yeah. It's like being in a car crash and you do see stars. I'm here to tell you. I've seen a few. Mm. Yep. It's uh, part and parcel of the game. Good sign. Amir Lewis is up on his feet. You know, we mentioned uh, Nick Faulkner a lot today out of that tradition-rich program, Canton McKinley High School here down the road in Ohio. Now, he's a sophomore now. So he played a lot last year. You think he, he could – I'm a starter. Hey, Coach, you know, you know back off on – I'm nope. a football player. Nope. No, I'm going to stay on specials. He was last year when he was just a true freshman. Now here he is again uh, as a starting defensive end. Right. Eight tackles, three tackles for loss, and special team work as well for Sean Faulkner. And this is Anthony Filial, the dangerous running back, flagged down as Apache Jamal Parker made the excellent uh, secure tackle. More flags. <laughs> over under, we get over 25. <laughs> Now, see, if you would have set that before the game started, Jay, you could add my mic. I would have said, no way there's, there's going to be that many flags thrown. Yeah, that has been a major storyline today, though. And it's definitely hurt the cause of Phil Yaw because he's had some excellent runs that have been negated through the penalty flags being thrown because of, again, great effort on the part of his teammates, but ill-advised doing too much blocking. Gerard, remember there was an emphasis. Let's listen to Matt Pakowski, and I'll finish that thought. It's, it's regarded to time of game and time of play. There are two fouls in the play, both on the offense. Holding, offense, number four. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, blocked all the way. Offense, number 65. Be half a distance from the end of the run. Repeat, Repeat, first down. So the multiple fouls, and Gerard, you know, in this offseason, there's been an emphasis on time of play. You know, the NCAA thought, you know, we're getting too long now, close to four-hour football games, too much. Let's be, you know, let's be quicker, more decisive, and yet here we are. This one today is, is probably going to get near four hours, and a lot of that is 22 flags thrown. Newton's going to load it up. Anthony made a terrific grab. Did he make that catch? Yes, he did. Kyle Anthony working on Demetrius Monday, and we have, guess what? Yeah. More laundry on the field. Another flag, and you see Anthony comes down with the ball, but again, it will be negated. Chances are because of a 
penalty flag. Yep, personal foul. Rough in the passer. With targeting. On the defense, number 90. 15 yards will be added on to the end of the run. The previous play is under further review. John Cunningham uh, got hit. Let's take a look. Look at the big number 90. And you, you see the push at the end, and you get what you want to protect the quarterback, but the helmet did somewhat lead, but it did great sell on him job on the part of Newton. But give again credit to his main receiver having the ability to come down with the ball again in Kyle Anthony. So Newton steps back and releases it. And Monday has to do a better job, Michael, of getting inside on this play because yes. if you're on the backside, you're not going to break up that play. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out to all of our young cornerbacks in coverage deep. And all right, there it is again. Now, Gerard, now the, the, again, the, the call was targeting. If this play stands, John Cunningham will be ejected and have to miss all of Kent State's game next week when they uh, head into tangle with uh, the Marshall Thundering Herd. And that's always a tough one because one of the things about football is you want to tell your guys to go out with effort and just location of where your helmet could be at that point in time doesn't mean that you were specifically targeting. But the referee obviously saw something he did not like. Well, we spoke to the gentleman in the uh, the replay booth here this, uh, this afternoon before the game. And now the call being targeting, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. And right now as things stands, Copeland's off the field. Uh, replay official Terry Young, communicator uh, Matt Conrad. They're they're taking a look at this. Yeah, Big John's off the field right now. Yeah. And if John, if this stands, that targeting stands, Cunningham will uh, have to miss next week at Marshall. The ruling of targeting on the previous play stands. Number 95 is disqualified. So there's a good look at Big John Cunningham. Young fella who at uh, 300 pounds out of Bedford High School here near Cleveland is uh, one of the rock of Gibraltar's for this Kent State defense. But again, the bad thing about it, and this is the rule, he, not only is he gone for the final five uh, minutes of some change, Gerard, he's disqualified next week at Marshall as well. All right, and they still have a football game to play this week, but that is a heavy loss because he means so much to this defensive line, what he's able to do by being stout. One of the few guys that played well last week against Clemson. He had his impact today on today's game. So no John Cunningham. A lot of time. Newton taking a shot for Anthony. Broken up at the last moment. Nice job getting his head around defensively by Eric Simpson, the junior. Strong safety who was able to break that up. One of the few times today that someone in the Golden Flash of secondary has been able to cover. Kyle Anthony. Last second to get the head around, but if you're Newton, you want to get that ball to the outside, not the inside, because bad things happen when you throw it inside and the DB is already in that position. There are two fouls on the play, both occurring as dead balls. The dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 55. That is his first of the half. Excuse me, first of the game. We have dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct. On the off. Number 53. That is his first of the game. Well, Jordan Robinson yeah, for Kent State. First down. And for Howard. I Correct. believe, did they Second say down. 53 on Howard? Uh, yeah, they did. So that's Tyrone Ramsey. All right. It's second and 10 from the 33 yard line. Kent State still holding this 14 point lead in now what is a flag filled fourth quarter. Fill y'all. And a power his way to the 30 yard line. Nice hit by Jim Jones to ride him to the ground for Kent State. Yeah, at this point, things are starting to get chippy between these two football teams. And you understand it's been a tightly contested battle, but you don't want to get kicked out unnecessarily for just doing things that have no positive impact on the game. Newton's going to take a shot to the end zone, and he uh, vastly overthrew his intended receiver, of course, uh, Jaquez Ezzard. Another flag. Personal foul. Rough in the pass. 
Defense, number 17. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And you don't want to be selfish on these particular plays. There's no reason to hit the quarterback. You have a situation where it's third and long potentially. And yes, you are taught to put a pressure and apply it, but you have to be smart as well. Nick Faulkner, who uh, we've raved player. about today, got caught smart. there. Yep. Well, that extends the drive, moves the down box, of course. Automatic first down, 15 yard line. How big would this be for Howard if they put seven on the board here? Phil Yaw, good cut, got taken down. Football came out, but Phil Yaw was on the ground. It's a strong hit by Matt Barr. Matt Barr wears number 29. As we said, the president of the Kent State Student Athlete Advisory Committee. One of the 11 golden flashes who already have their bachelor degrees. Uh, Gerard, you said 25. I believe we're going to be up. We'll check with our uh, booth statistician, Jeff Gears, who does a fabulous job for us. We're going to be up near 30 penalties today. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. 24 right now, 12 on each side. Between the two teams, there it is. It's, if my math is right, it's cost the teams combined 246 penalty yards. Incredible. Second and nine, Newton will float his throw, ill-advised, could have had that picked off. And you know it's getting bad to the point to where you see a play take place, you're waiting for the penalty flag to be dropped. It has been that impactful today. And right here, you still have a football game going on because if you are able to score for the Bison, they are a quick offense. All it takes is a three and out. Well, they you can need have a seven, game. though. I, but they I, certainly do I, need Yeah, it. I would be surprised if uh, if uh, they come up uh, on uh, short on this third down call and have face it fourth down if Mike London will kick a field goal here. Going to run the football with Phil Yaw. He's in trouble. Excellent job by Kent State to string that out. Again, James Jones on the hit. The senior, a junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. So here we go. No field goal unit. Going down by 11 isn't going to do you much good here, Gerard. Yeah, they need I, seven. And I like the idea of running Phil Yard to the open side of the field, not to the boundary. Give him more space to work with. Right there, the sidelines is the help on defense. Jaquez Ezard, Guy Lamagne, Kyle Anthony. Three receivers. Fourth down and nine, Kayla Newton. Then a gun end zone, it is caught. They wanted to throw that quick lateral after the catch was made by Anthony. That is a first down. First down, Anthony. Excellent throw by Kayla Newton as he gunned Anthony. And Anthony has some choice words from one of the defenders for Kent State, but give Anthony credit because he's been playing extremely high level today. Newton will keep the football. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Kalen Newton. He continues his multiple touchdown run in the first two games of the year for Howard. And now this, P this PAT, if successful, will bring the Bison back to within seven. Just again, you see Newton's ability to stay alive and to just decipher where he wants to go and eventually gets to where he needs to be to get the extra six points. Very patient runner. Well, what a future that young man has, huh? Dakota Labofsky will bang that PAT through the uprights. Just a freshman. Yep, true freshman. Seven point deficit now for Mike London and his Bison of Howard. 316 left, folks. We told you there'd be more fireworks. Don't go away. We'll come right back to finish this up out of Dick Stadium. Back at Dick Stadium, Kent State's Golden Flashes have uh, seen their, what was a moment ago, 14-point advantage, sliced to 7, 38-31. Touchdown run from this dynamic freshman quarterback of Howard Kalen Newton, 316 left. Kent State now, you're anticipating onside here. The flashes are, nope, as uh, Sabofsky will drive it away. Price from the five. 
Cavius Price going into his stutter step act. Better make sure you hang on the football, young man, at the at the 18-yard line. So 3:08 left. We've seen two ball control drives dominated by the run game resulted at 14 points for Kent State. They need another one just like that, Gerard Jerry. <laughs> they certainly do, and you're the Bison. You're assuming that that will be the case, but you also have to be aware that they. Being Kent State may say, you know, let's take a shot as well to reestablish a 14-point lead. So Nick Holly, he's been at the throttle of this uh, Kent State offense. After last week, yards were in uh, points, very tough to come by against uh, the Clemson Tiger defense. Holly has played beautifully today. Uh, that first carry as they'll pound the football out of that uh, that zone read look is. They'll run with uh, Will Matthews there, and Matthews running hard, the 205-pounder. Matthews has had a solid day. A great job on the part of the offensive coordinators for Kent State of utilizing the size difference. In you're getting 5, 10 yards of carry. Why not employ that? Because you are going against an undersized FCS school, and at some point through the course of the game, it weighs on you. 250 versus sure. 300 pounds. You know, Gerard, I always wonder, too, a team that likes to go up tempo and quickly, now when you have a lead, fourth quarter, and you got, you're huddling because you want to run play clock and you want to uh, shorten the game, how effective will you be? We're about to find out with Kent State. Good cut. Will Matthews comes free to the 45-yard line. That's 21 yards on a Will Matthews run for a Kent State first down. And throughout the course of the second half, Will Matthews has just been a shoestring tackle away from breaking some long runs, and you're starting to see again his strength, his power, and ability to stay alive and just run with that type of conviction. It's starting to have its impact on this Bison undersized defense. Kent State approaching three. 100 yards on the ground today as uh, they came in wanting to establish uh, the ability to run the football behind this talented offensive line, and they've done that. And Nick Holly has been the, uh, the bell cow of that. 286 yards on the ground. Third consecutive carry for Will Matthews as he's got eight more pounding into Howard territory. And now Mike London wants to get a timeout before the second down snap. That's her second. I want to clear up something that I stated earlier on and uh, correct with regard to the uh, the targeting call on Kent State's John Cunningham. I believe I said that he would miss the entire football game next week at Marshall. He'll only miss the first half. So I want to clear that up as, uh, yeah, you are uh, not eligible for the half of the next football game. So. Uh, our Mid-American Conference uh, Outstanding Conference Office, Bob Generelli, all over that. Appreciate that, Bob. Want to make sure we're we're on time with that. Mike London on time with his Howard football program. They're trying to back up last week's big win over UNLV and uh, now find themselves down seven with only a timeout to play with. Yeah, and you, if you're Coach Lennon, obviously you want to get this victory, but you have to be encouraged the progress your program has made within two games early on the infancy of this college football season. Second and three. Now go to the big back, the true freshman, Kashawn Gamble. That today for Kent State. Just, uh, I want to give you the play distribution here. That is their 68th snap play they've run. Final timeout for Howard. 52 of the 68 times Kent State has snapped the football. It's been with the ground game. They've run the football and thrown it but 16 times. Yeah, we know in this day and age, people like to spread offense and pass the football every chance you get. But if the run game is effective and you're getting 300 yards total in the pursuit of doing that, why not employ the run? And it's been extremely effective, especially in this second half. But the way Williams is running the ball and the rest of the power backs for this Kent State offense. Yeah, and this 69th snap of the football game for Kent State, uh, if they convert here and move the chains to pick up this first down, game over. Yeah, game that was over. the last time out that uh, Mike London has at his availability. So with a minute and 36 left, first down here will do it. Yeah. Victory formation and take a knees for Nick Holland. Right, you figure Will Matthews has been the hot hand, so why not give him the rock again? Third and three, line to make it the 45. 
This is Matthews. Didn't get there. He got stopped. Now, Mike London cannot stop the clock. He's going to continue to run. Kent State will have to punt this football at about 52 seconds left. You've had so much success going straight ahead. Oh, they're stopping the clock, though, for a Howard injury. Mm. However, the, the play clock right now is recycled to 40. As soon as this young man is uh, hopefully able to come off the football field, referee Matt Pankowski will start winding the game clock and play clock. Exactly. You never want to say a timely injury, but that does help his team's cause with the timeout situation as it is. Now, that, that play, the play clock... It's right now recycled to 40. I was watching it. It was at 28 after the third down stop when the uh, referee, Matt Pankowski, uh, stopped the game clock and play clock, of course, due to this injury. All right, you figure fourth down, Kent State. Avoid the slant plays. Go straight ahead. You've had so much success. That gives Howard the advantage because they have smaller, undersized, quicker players that can shoot the gaps. You want to make it straight ahead and force the power of your offensive line not to be negated by having these guys do slant blocking or reach blocking. Just allow them to plow. Yeah, fourth down at two. We still haven't been able to, as you look at uh, Nick Holly, who's done an outstanding job today, quarterback at Kent State. We haven't been able to identify the, the Howard defensive player just now getting to his feet. It looks like Isaiah flew, and that's the second time, time. today yes, yes, yeah. this young man has been helped off the football field. Again, 230 versus 305. It eventually weighs on you. And Brings up a fourth down and two now, Gerard. And again, now, you know, minute 24 left. You got now. Kent State, now see there, referee Matt Pankowski just wound both the play clock and the game clock. So now the game, the play clock did recycle to, to 40 a moment ago. So Kent State doesn't have to put this football till in the neighborhood of about 45 seconds left. And they'll just stand over there in the sidelines. Right. They'll stand over there and then they maybe could take a timeout if they want with a play clock at zero. And if you can't start, you should still be nervous because we know that there are two, three big play players on that Bison offense. And you got Phil Yaw. If Phil Yaw can't get the job done, you got Anthony. Right. Or Newton. Yep. No, they've got they've certainly got capable. Right. As we suggested, with one on the play clock, 44 on the game clock, Kent State took the timeout. So they just let virtually 40 seconds run off there as they should have. Now, again, now they'll punt the football away with 44 seconds left. I'm assuming, we, I, maybe I shouldn't, we assume they're going to punt the football away here. It would be accurate to say, partner, we have had some of everything. Whatever your tastes are, <laughs> As a college football fan, they have been uh, on display at some point today. Yes, you've seen the big play. You've seen the I can't believe that happened play. And something tells me this is not going to end with it just being routine. Yep, close to four hours worth of college football here. All right, to boot this away is Derek Adams. Guy Lamagne is deep. Adams trying to angle that near the pylon. He did a terrific job. Inside the 10 yard line, spotted at the eight. That's why he is a Ray Guy Award nominee. The outstanding Kent State punter, Derek Adams, the sophomore out of Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Well, right now, if I'm the defensive coordinator, Ben Needham or Jeff Burroughs, I'm saying do not let Powell or Phil Yaw beat you. Double cover, triple cover. Down by seven. Kalen Newton, true freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. Yep, the brother of Cam Newton. Engineered the upset last week over UNLV. Had a brilliant game. Named the MEAC 
Offensive player of the week. He's going to try to do it here. He's got to go 92 yards, folks, without a timeout. Newton will step up. Going to keep the football. Did manage to get out of bounds as he got swarmed on as that Kent State defense converged on him. We'll stop the clock here with 31 seconds left. Interesting play call in that they did not send their receivers deep like it was a design run. Second down snap, Newton on a fire sideline. Standing all by himself, Guy Lamagne and made this. the catch. First down, except do we have a flag? Yeah, we do. Thrown by the umpire in the in the area of holding. But beyond the flag, you know it's a situation where they have no timeouts as a defender. You need to defend the boundary because why? That is the place we where they need to get to. Offense, number 53. Five yard penalty, replay, second down. Again, let's call situational football and just understanding the situation at hand and you have to protect the sideline if you're a defender. Right, other than a play that goes for a touchdown, that's the only, only ally exactly. that, that Howard has right now is being able to step out of bounds. Exactly. All right. The football has been moved back to the seven-yard line. This is second down and about 12. Newton in trouble and spun down. What an outstanding defensive hit by Theo of Boys Bay, who's been terrific today. Ten seconds left. And Newton faked the spike. And now we'll throw the football out of bounds with one hmm. second left. The clock hit triple zeros. We've got a flag, naturally, at the 28-yard line. And yes. Mike London wants more time. And he'll get more time because Demetrius Monday did something that a senior should not do. Why take a shot when the game is over on a player that's def defenseless? Just no, no reason for it whatsoever. Like I said, we knew this was not going to end routine. And who knows what can happen on this last play right here. Well said, partner. Personal foul. Defense. Number 21. 15-yard penalty in the previous spot. We have one on time down. I agree with you, though. He's an all-MAC performer, fifth-year senior. Demetrius Monday is a terrific football player, but he's got to be better than this. Yes, you do. You got to be smarter than that. I understand that guys have said some choice things to you, but let it go. You're in the process of potentially winning the football game. And if something miraculous was to happen right here, it's going to be a long night for you. All right, this is an untimed down because referee Matt Pankowski did not put that one second that Mike London wanted back on the game clock. Untimed down. Catch State with four back at their own 45. Newton. Gonna unload it as deep as he can. That's picked off by Monday. It's over. The Kent State Golden Flashes come up with the 38-31 wild win over Howard. And that is the key word, wild win. You might want to throw flag win in there as well. Not saying they need flags to win it, but it was a very penalty laced football game. But Monday making up for his mistake, recovers. Very, very entertaining football game. Yeah, Mike London uh, of Howard and the Kent State coaching staff uh, greeting one another. Almost four hours, partner, of uh, college football fun and, and uh, excitement results in a 38-31 Kent State win as the Golden Flashes uh, rush the football for close to 300 yards on the day. And that's what you call putting in work for that offensive line. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. And to get just play. enough defense, and I mean just, just enough no. defense, <laughs> to hold on and win this 38-31. All right, don't go away. We will... Uh, All right, that is uh, going to do it for us from Dick Stadium. Kent State evens up at one and one as uh, Nick Holly and friends come away with a raucous 38-31 win over the Howard Bison from the FCS.
Hope you join it, everybody. This one, of course, as always, can be watched uh, on uh, the ESPN app, streaming live on the ESPN app, or you can watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watch ESPN.com. For Gerard Cherry and the crew, I'm Michael Regai. So long.